Hi, yay, we're hey, here. We're here. <laughs> um, tēnā koutou katoa, nō mai hali mai, and um, welcome to the School of Social Work. Um, we also uh, provide social policy programs. So I'm just going to introduce myself. My name is Dr Polly Young, and I am a graduate of the Master of Applied Social Work um, at Massey University. Tēnā koutou, uh, nō mai hali mai anō. Um, ko Hannah Mooney tōku uh, I am... Um, also, I'm a BSW coordinator alongside Polly, um, and yeah, we're looking forward to talking with you about our program today, or a couple of our programs today. Um, yeah, if you're interested in social work or social policy. That's right. We also have a, um, our social work graduate who's going to come in shortly uh, to talk about her experience, and also we're going to have a chat with her as well. Great, and as Maddie said before, um, we're also going to have a Zoom link um, that's going to be shared with you so that if you wanted to ask some questions and it be more interactive, um, we can do that straight after the presentation as well. Great. Well, without further ado, let's run through what we got for you. So um, what is social work? Well, social work is actually really diverse, but obviously we've got the word social and work there. It's about engaging with people, particularly to address people's challenges and enhance well-being. And I think one of the things that you might actually been um, seeing a lot is um, during the COVID-19 lockdown, we've got a lot of essential workers, including social workers out there, supporting other people, promoting social change, uh, helping other people to achieve social justice, um, so we under the International Federation of Social Work Global um, Definition. So it's um, it's a very important um, career for people who are, um, you know, feeling like you, you've got something that you can offer and help other people. So we, um, as you can see, we're a practice-based profession. So we are out in practice. And once you qualify with a social work degree, you can actually go out and practice and work as a social worker. Um, so no, you don't have to do postgraduate study, although you are obviously encouraged to continue to professionally develop or personally develop. Mm. Um, but we're also an academic discipline. So Polly and I still see ourselves as practicing social workers mm. and we're contributing to research and publications as well. That's right. And education. Mm. As you can see in this particular slide, there's a photo there. We've got two of our um, social work students who now graduated from the program. They got uh, they received two different awards in their fourth year. So uh, we do um, acknowledge students who have done a lot of um, not just academically, but also con make contribution to their peers and to the community. And like um, Polly mentioned, social change, social justice, human rights. Um, social work is a really, really value-based profession, um, probably similar to other professions. Uh, and yeah, our value base is quite strong. So whilst we all come from different um, backgrounds and um, have different life experience, we also um, have a shared value system in how we work. Mm -hmm. The beauty of our program is that uh, we, we have um, quite a lot of diversity. So not only we have um, our tangata whenua, um, myself as Chinese, and we also have um, another uh, colleagues from other places and also with different, um, they identify with different identities. So we do provide a social and culturally um, diverse group to teach our students. Oh, and I guess um, one thing to add mm -hmm. to that is that it is a degree that you can take overseas um, and lots of our graduates have taken it overseas, uh, taken the degree overseas, Australia, um, the UK, um, among other places. Absolutely. Right. So I guess this is just a, a, a slide to have a look at some bullet points um, to have a think about whether social work might be a good fit for you. Um, often when students are looking at applying for social work, um, they're thinking about, I guess, what kind of qualities or person they are in their own families or in their own communities. Lots of people talk about being um, kind of the person that people come to um, for support or they're a good listener um, or they're the person that coordinates um, things in their own families. Um, and so some of those qualities are all of, like, sort of naturally there. And so they're thinking about how they can utilise those in a practice based profession. Um, so are those sorts of qualities that you come with? Um, it takes lots of different qualities, of course, to be a social worker, um, but those might be your kind of first points of call. Mm -hmm. And it, it is a really rewarding career, and over 90% of our graduates, they find uh, work within six months. And, and, and some of the works is not just within the uh, practice area, they go into social policy, they go into government, and even go into further research. So it opens up different angles and, and avenue to people uh, who graduate from our programme. 
Yeah, so I guess it's also it might appeal to you if you just want to make a difference. Um, it might be at an, at an individual level. You really just want to work with people in your local community or you might want to make a difference, as Polly mentioned, in government, um, structural change, um, having a say um, to kind of make the world a better place for everybody, I guess. Um, you also it's one of the things about our degree is people talk about how um, it can be quite life changing for themselves or transformative for themselves. Um, and as a career, um, it's helpful, I guess, to be open to both professional development, but also your own personal development, you know, challenging some of our own perhaps fixed ideas about the world and, and learning new knowledge. Mm. One of the um, feedback that we get a lot from the uh, community, uh, who an organisation who hire us graduates to become social workers, is that um, our social work programme also have a strong fundamental um, element of social policy. So students not just coming out knowing how to practice, they actually know how to integrate the macro system uh, to articulate some of the issues that in relation to poverty, uh, human rights, um, and, and even like in, in our current situation, disaster management. Um, so in a sense, you know, a messy social work degree can offer you not just practice, but also the wider uh, macro understanding of the world, which, you know, makes it more worthwhile, um, you know, for people to pursue that. And the picture on the slide is um, some of our students who are, who are currently studying with us, I think mm. one who's just recently graduated actually, mm. um, and you might have seen them in some of our promotional material as well. Mm. Right, so obviously a bit of a wordy slide because it's quite hard to capture what we do and some of the troubles I think that social workers come across occasionally is people not sure what social workers do and it's quite hard to capture because actually we work in lots of different areas. Um, and the next slide will show you a, a few of those different areas that we work in. Um, but sometimes, yeah, I guess sometimes people come across social work in one particular area and think that's the only place that social workers work. Mm -hmm. um, so broadly, what do we do? Um, we inquire, we gather information, we explore and we evaluate. So we are information gatherers, we assess things, we work alongside people to find out, I guess, what's going on for them. Um, in order to work alongside them to help them make the changes that they want to see for them. So in order to do that, we have to be, I guess, good gatherers of that information. We need to have the correct information and we really want to understand it from their perspective, not just um, from our own or necessarily from other people's, although we might also gather information from other people as well as part of that. Mm. And we're also doing that by challenging the system, you know, that, that's why it's so important that we've got the social policy stream in our social work. Um, if you think about, you know, there's been lots of information, lots of issues about how to reduce poverty. Well, you know, as a micro service or social service, you might provide some money and some support uh, for people to kind of um, help them out in the interim. But in the bigger picture, you know, what can we do in order to change the system to make it better? And this is where social work comes into play, not just doing micro practice, but also going out there doing advocacy, um, empowerment, you know, some of the sort of social actions and, and, and through transformative way to change the um, government system, government policy to help looking at redistribution of resources. Yeah. So um, networking, understanding our community as well, and connecting people with resources is really important. Um, some of those really practical supports that social workers might help with, you know, connecting with schools, um, connecting with workplaces um, and supporting that person and within their own social system or community. Mm -hmm. Um, we also might be involved in kind of a therapeutic approach, um, you know, kind of whether that's one on one or working with families, groups of people, um, as I mentioned, to work with them on things that perhaps they want to see change, whether it's within their own life or within their own communities or um, even nationally and internationally sometimes. Mm -hmm. So in some ways, if you look at over here, we've got this little folly here, a house. Um, it is about working holistically. So we're not just focusing on one person. We're focusing on the whole whanau, whole community, physical, mental, spiritual, um, and you know, extended family and their extended community in terms of health and well-being. So social work is not just one aspect. Often that makes our job quite diverse, but it can be quite hard to pinpoint what we do, but we actually do really, really well holistically. So we recognise that things interact. Mm, yeah. Um, rather than focusing it on one thing, we recognise that other things impact on that and that particular thing impacts on other things.
response to. That's right. So we talk quite a little bit um, about social policy. So obviously, our School of Social Work not only offers social work, but we also have social policy as a discipline. Um, so policy and social policy are actually really important in our society. Um, I mean, you just think about the um, current issues with the COVID-19, um, how much policy that's involved in terms of looking at developing the lockdown, uh, distributing resources. And I think the most recent one, perhaps many of you have heard about and been chasing up, it's about the budget you know, came out last last week, you know, who are benefiting from the budget, who aren't. Um, this is not just short term and looking at long term. Um, and, 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 you know, at the same time, we're looking at the health system, you know, um, how the health system are coping in terms of our, um, you know, um, support for uh, coping with the pandemic. So all these things comes with social policy. Social policy is about distributing and redistributing, redistributing resources. And that's why it's really important to learn about it, not just from the social worker, but also social policy, because we often work hand in hand. Um, what can be done in the front line, it's also influenced by policy. So we do have a very uh, strong um, discipline in social policy and we attract a lot of students who come in to uh, do social policy undergraduate but also postgrad with us. And it's an election year this year. Yeah, so that will make it things. even more interesting. I mean, if you have been um, watching the TV, we will know that there will be the National Party. They're going to have a caucus to, just to see if Simon Bridges is going to survive. So, yeah, lots of things. And, and, and I mean, um, it's an unfortunate situation with COVID-19, but there's lots of interesting issues in relation to social policy and policy, which will affect social work as such, but also uh, will raise a lot of interest for those who are interested in that sort of area. Nice. Right. Right. So this is a slide I talked about before, um, some of the different areas that social workers work in. Um, a lot of the time people do consider care and protection as one of the main areas that social workers work in, and that's, that is true. Um, a big employer of social workers, um, but within even that service, there's a whole youth justice side to that. There's adoptions and there's also foster care. So that even in, in within what under some of their care, it's, it's extended beyond a care and protection role. Um, we are also very well represented in health, um, whether that's in the NGO or non-government organisation area, um, in community agencies or in the actual DHBs themselves, in mental health, in um, physical health, um, in all the different departments, the emergency department, oncology, yeah, everywhere basically there's social workers as represented. Um, and you may or may not have come across social workers working mm. in those areas. Yeah. Hannah, interestingly, tell us why you've included this photo in here. What has it got to do with social work? Yeah, so this is actually one of our students. He's a current student at the moment, um, Thomas, and he uh, is actually a hip hop expert, mm. I would say. Um, and this is him um, at, a, I think, in an international, um, not to say international honour, yeah. um, representing, <laughs> representing us. Um, we liked to profile him because I think one of the things he's really interested in and, and lots of he's interested in lots of things, but he's quite interested in that combination of hip hop and social work um, or dance and social work, expressive arts and social work. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the cool things about social work that I think um, we've highlighted here is our scope of practice is really growing. So whilst we have our kind of traditional areas that we work in mm -hmm. um, in care and protection, working with children, working in schools, working in health, working in, in prisons um, or policy roles, management roles. Um, we can be creative. You know, there's mm. some social workers going into adventure therapy, um, into more therapeutic roles, mm. into, we are excited using, to see where yeah, Thomas takes that. Yeah, using hip hop dancing <laughs> to get connected with um, young people, um, maybe even um, young vulnerable young people. Well, the other thing is that I've been involved, it's called veterinary social work, social workers working mm. alongside veterinarian to provide support, you know, for grieving and compassion fatigue, those are the areas. So, yeah, yeah so it's very diverse. Yeah, that's yeah. really interesting, that area. Yeah. Mm. Wow, who are these two people there, Hannah? Um, so these two people are, are, some, are a couple of people that we recognise as the founders of our program and our, our program is, is the longest running social work mm. program in Aotearoa New Zealand, that's still running. Um, so we've been going for over 40 years now, I think it was 1976, mm. was when we were established. Um, and yeah, it was with um, Merv Hancock and Ephra Garrett, um, who had a vision for a social work qualification that represented a whole lot of different things that represented well in policy. We've got a strong policy stream, mm -hmm. hence the policy that um, Polly was talking about, um, that would be 
have strong elements of, I guess, bicultural practice coming through that would be really closely connected to the community. Um, and also very strong kind of critical um, critical writers, critical thinkers, mm. critical reflectors, which I think we are pretty well known for too. Yeah, yeah. 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 And the, uh, our Bachelor of Social Work is a four-year degree with two field placement and which student can undertake either in Albany as an internal student or down at Palmerston North as internal or by distance. And Heather, mm. I think you are the graduate. Um, Man, not many, many, many years ago from our BSW program. Not that many years ago. <laughs> um, we also have our Bachelor of Art, come, which comes on, uh, social policy comes on in our school as a three-year program. Now, if you decided that you might just still want to do a BA, like myself, I did a BA degree at, you know, at another university, and I decided hmm, I really wanted to become a social worker. You can then also do the Apply Master program, which can be off, which is offered up in Albany as an internal cohort, or by distance, which is through Palmerston North. Um, so you can study full time or part time. Um, so yeah, so we, we do have a few options. If um, the bachelor degree might not be what you're what you're thinking at the moment, you can also think about the apply master after. Okay, right, so we are a selected entry program. So sometimes this takes a little bit more time and thought when you you are applying. Um, so there are a few items that you have to submit, and you know everything else that involves. Um, enrolling and admission, admission to a university. Mm -hmm. um, so one of those things is there's just some generic sort of application form information. Um, we ask for a curriculum curriculum by table CV um, with the most, I guess your most up to date version of that because that's something that the registration board also requires us to do. So it becomes part of our process. Um, a short essay or we call it a supporting statement, just ask, uh, explaining why you wish to enter social work. Um, and this can be quite personal, you know, what, what is it that has drawn you towards the qualification? Um, it might be quite in-depth or it might be quite straightforward and simple. Um, we get a whole range and that's fine as well. Um, two character references, usually you nominate somebody, you nominate this in, in your um, admission process um, and provide um, emails for these people and the reference gets sent directly to them. Um, and so it has to be somebody who's known you for a year or longer. Um, and can't be your friends or your family members or family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so sometimes that's a bit challenging. So if you have any, if you get stuck on any of this stuff, there are people that you can ring at Massey or you can also contact us. Um, in fact, sometimes it's easier to contact us because yeah. we can help troubleshoot those things. Definitely, yeah. Um, we also police check. So again, one of the things that's come in with social work registration um, is that, yeah, everybody goes through police checks, yeah. whether it's applying for a social work program. as well. Um, so some of the questions in there, well, there's a fit and proper policy that the registration board has um, that yeah explores some of that stuff around the conviction, if you have any convictions and things like that. If you have any worries or concerns about that or you just want to ask questions about that, more than happy to um, chat on the phone yeah. or answer emails as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the other two was just um, looking at fit and proper concern as we talk about we do police check and also for those who are international students we do have to look at IELTS or TOEFL. Um, I I'm just going to go to the uh, second last line because I know our um, graduate is already waiting for, uh, to come in and talk to you guys. Um, if you are interested in social work or social policy, um, there are three people here that you can contact. Obviously you can contact Larry Cooper which is our associate head of school. but here we've got Hannah Mooney next to me and me, Holly Young, and you can contact us because we're the uh, BSW program coordinator, or you can send an inquiry to social at massey.az.nz. Um, for more information, there's also a link here, uh, but I'm sure there will be lots of people uh, behind the scene to know that you can ask more questions in terms of um, anything in, in relation to the program. Now, the next things that we would like to introduce to you is Izzy uh, Mickelson. She's a registered social worker, but it's also our BSW graduate, mm -hmm. I think a couple or three years ago. Um, at the moment, Izzy is working for the uh, Massey University Student Association as a distant advocate. Um, so we are going to get Izzy to come and talk to us about her experience doing the program. Izzy, are you ready? Yeah, I am. I think I'm good. So, kia ora everyone, my name is Izzy um, and yeah I completed the Bachelor of Social Work with Massey in 2018. Um, I truly believe that 
if you're a person who loves other people and feels that their place in the world is to support others, then the BSW is a great fit. Um, however, I'll discuss my experience a bit more so I can really convince you. Uh, so I decided to study social work after uh, working in a homeless and disabled centre in Vietnam. I found that finding um, and seeing others smile and laugh or reach an incredible milestone was the, was the adrenaline rush for me that others feel when they bungee jump or do other crazy things. Um, and then having grown up with cancer playing a big part of my family's life, I was really excited when I found out that oncology social work was a thing, um, as in working with cancer patients and their families as a social worker. So at that point, I was pretty sold on the degree and I left school and moved straight into it. Um, I don't regret this decision at all and studying straight from school is um, something that really works for me. However, some of my classmates were 20 or, or more years older than me and studying at that age is what worked for them. So the degree is fitting for a range of people and um, we were really a close knit group even with this diversity. So across the four years, um, you'll learn about a range of topics. Realistically, not all of them are going to be your favourites. However, I'm confident you'll learn um, learn of some you didn't know you'd be interested in. And once that can of worms is open, it's a pretty hard one to close. Um, one of my favourite memories of the BSW was in first year. After a couple of social policy classes, I promptly approached my lecturer and told her I couldn't possibly be a social worker because, and this is a quote, um, quite frankly, I hate social policy. Um, and the lecturer encouraged me to stick with it. And I'm pleased to say that by the end of the degree, social policy and I had a bit more of a mutual understanding. I still can't say I love social policy, but it is pretty cool now as well. Um, I'm also pleased that nowadays I don't jump and run away from these sorts of things as much as I used to. Um, and the point of this story is to just be honest and tell you that it won't always be easy, but to trust the process and enjoy the realisations. So fourth year was my favourite year of study due to the flexibility and range of topics we were allowed to choose for our assignments. Um, this meant I could research areas I was really interested in. Uh, I completed assignments on domestic violence where men are the victims, uh, mental health and farmers, suicide prevention and sustainable social work. Although I chose this degree knowing I wanted to be an oncology social worker, the course provides the opportunity to explore a range of topics and I'm really grateful for that. Studying is way more fun um, when you get to choose your assignment topics. The two three month placements are easily a highlight of the degree. Um, my third year placement was with the New Zealand Police. I was place, placed with the Iwi Liaison Officer and got to work alongside him in a range of preventive preventative initiatives to stop Māori from entering the justice system where possible. This was an area of social work I hadn't even considered um, existing until this placement. Uh, and I also worked alongside the Family Harm Team, Community Police, Frontline Patrol and Youth Aid. Uh, so I can't promise you this for your placement experience, but I thought it'd be cool to add that um, the Iwi Liaison Officer is also a sniper in the Armed Defender Squad and I got to learn to shoot all the guns. So that was pretty cool as well. Um, my fourth year placement was with Mid Central DHB, where I got to work a caseload predominantly in the oncology ward. So, an absolute dream come true for me. Um, they basically had to pry my caseload from my fingers come the end of the placement. I loved it so much. And while in the hospital, I also got to experience social work in medical and surgical wards, neonatal rehabilitation and the emergency department. And all of these areas require a different type of social work and they're all really fascinating. After three years of the degree, I was employed to work in emergency accommodation for women and their children. Most of the res residents in this accommodation were fleeing abusive relationships or were battling addictions to drugs and alcohol. Uh, when the manager hired me, she specifically pointed out that my social work training was a skill the hiring team could not pass up. And for me, it was incredibly rewarding to be an empowered woman empowering other women through this role. Uh, I'm now employed as the distance advocate for students at Massey University with roughly 10,000 students falling under my care. I work with everyone from uh, with everything from grievances and complaints to homelessness, mental health issues and relationship breakdowns. Um, my training um, and sorry, my training has also equipped me with the skill set to design and implement um, a mental health initiative, um, which is something I'm incredibly proud of and something that I would have found really useful when I was a student. 
So despite my young age, through my placements and jobs, I have worked with domestic violence survivors, gangs, youths, children, cancer patients, families, mothers, offenders, students, Māori, and the list could go on. The BSW has made me feel confident in my practice with a range of people and groups. Um, studying the BSW with Massey also provides a special opportunity to bond with your classmates and lecturing staff. The classes are small and the lecturers don't just stand up at the front and read off some cheesy PowerPoint slides. They give parts of themselves and that makes learning all the more interesting and personal. To this day, I still remember sitting in a lecture where Polly was sharing photos of her travel and work overseas. And I also remember the day Hannah announced her pregnancy. You build a beautiful relationship with the lecturers and I think it is very worth mentioning as it's a part of why the degree is such a wonderful experience. So to finish, I'd like to leave you with three points that I feel are pretty useful. Number one, Google the different roles you can be in as a social worker. I say this as many people only think of Oranga Tamariki when they think of social work. The range is crazy huge and to this day I can still find myself amazed at the places I can go with my degree. And number two, trust your heart. If you feel that really nice feeling when you see someone achieve a milestone, then the BSW is for you. This will get you through the challenging moments and the success you will experience with future clients will make every hour of study worth it. And finally, it is your passion that will see you achieve your success in this degree and as a social worker. As I wrote this speech, I'm aware that it may paint myself as a relatively high achiever and therefore maybe not so relatable. However, I wanted to assure you that I certainly wasn't the ducks of my high school. I mean, I, I wasn't even close. Uh, I definitely got a couple of C's throughout my degree and I most definitely maintained a very healthy social work around my studies. So basically what I'm saying is that I'm not speaking to you today as a top academic, but I am as someone who has led passion lead the way and I can stand by this as being the best decision I've made. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Izzy. You know, um, I think I'm um, so pleased with your speech and I think this demonstrates that, you know, you've actually gone through, um, you know, a lot of diff different ups and downs during your BSW and look what you've turned out to be a very successful and very well prepped and, you know, um, and very respectful social worker. So we really thank you for that. Just one, uh, one question before we move on probably to the next presenter. What is your next goal? Um, so I've... I've started studying again. I'm now studying public health um, just to help me get into health social work. I'd love to crack um, the hospitals to then yeah, get back into oncology because I know that's where my greatest passion is. So I think that's where I'm going to be the best social worker. That's great. Yeah, we, we, we love the fact that it's, um, you know, studying it doesn't stop at just one degree. You know, we, we, we look forward to having you back doing more postgrad with us in our social <laughs> school, but I know that you're also um, um, good to know that you're also doing public health. I presume you're doing it, Massey, <laughs> so with, our, with our counterparts so in our college. So that's really great. So have you got any other questions to ask, Hannah, uh, ask um, Izzy, Hannah? No, but I just really enjoyed listening to you talking about it as it brought back some memories. Yeah. I wasn't Expecting that one to pop up, but yeah, um, yeah no, um, uh, thank you for that, Izzy. It's really nice to hear your recent experience. You know, as mm. Polly mentioned, I was a BSW grad, but my experience goes back a little bit further, so it's nice to have something a bit more recent. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, it's great to hear your reflection of um, you still remember our presentation and Hannah's great news, you know. So, and I think one of the good things about the BSW program, it's small enough, but it's um, intimate enough that we can um, know students really well. I know that. I bump into Izzy and her other work a few times and we stopped by while having a chat about your placement. So um, it's always good to kind of know the student, um, you know, in the area and then we can catch up with them. Um, and, and, and that's not just about pushing them to do their assignment, but it's also giving them a little bit of that personal touch and knowing that we're here to support you. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. great. Thank you, Izzy. Thanks very much. I think we just have one more one more little bit on, on our slide just to remind those who are listening. So I'm hoping that we can go back to our last slide, if that's okay. We'll still share. All right. So awesome. Um, so as you heard um, Izzy's story, um, if you want to talk to Hannah and myself for a bit longer, we actually have 
organize another room for you to meet with us. Uh, if you can see on the slide on the corner down here, if you want to discuss the BSW further, please join me and Hannah on Zoom. Um, and I know that our lovely colleagues who are behind the scene uh, probably um, provided you with the Zoom, um, Zoom number, but it's down right there, 956-9520-0766. So Hannah and I will be there um, um, talking to you guys for a little bit more. See you soon. Thank you very much. No mai, hare mai, and welcome to the talk on health science at Mass University. I'm Associate Professor Wyatt Page, and along with Dr. Judy Thomas and our discipline leaders, we will tell you about the programs in health science at Mass University. In this talk, we'll answer the question, why would you choose to do health science? We'll look at employment opportunities in the health sector. We'll look at in detail our Bachelor of Health Science and its seven exciting majors. We'll look at some of the alternative pathways to a degree program. And then finally, we will summarize all of this information. So why might you want to do health science? Perhaps you've asked this, you're the question, why are some people healthy and others not? Perhaps you've asked the question, what does it take to prevent disease and improve or maintain good health? How might you go about promoting health and well-being to the diverse New Zealand population, including those with disability? And how do I navigate the complex New Zealand healthcare system to get the best value out of it? And last but not least, where might I go to answer these questions? Here's three did you knows. Did you know that New Zealand has the highest prevalence of asthma in the world? with over one in seven children getting asthma. But when we look at the rates of children from rural population and farmers, they're much lower than in urban areas. Did you know that in 2018, the Action Compensation Corporation had almost 240,000 workplace injury claims? And those industries claiming the most often were agriculture, fishing and forestry. And finally, did you know that New Zealand has over 60,000 stroke survivors and stroke is a major cause of serious disability. But one of the best ways to recover from stroke is to have a good rehabilitation program. So what are the 21st century health challenges? We're all very, very familiar with COVID-19 at the moment and therefore world pandemics. And that's a serious problem currently but it's still sitting in the backdrop of climate change. This is not going to go away. We still have serious concerns around food production and distribution. On paper, we have sufficient food to feed the world's population, but we can't distribute it effectively and there's an awful lot of wastage. And finally, our fourth major challenge is global urbanization. More and more of the world's population are living in urban settings, densely populated cities, and this is putting significant stress on the individual's health and on the environmental health as well. So what are employment opportunities like in the health sector? Well, career prospects in general health are excellent. And in New Zealand, the health and social services sector is the largest single workforce in the country, representing over 10% of the total workforce. Demand for health care, both nationally and internationally, is growing. But New Zealand isn't producing enough health graduates. Currently, 42% of our health workforce is trained overseas. We need to train more local health workforce workers. And if you're interested in what sort of income you might get having completed a degree, then five years post a bachelor's degree in the broad area of public health, the medium salary is $74,000, much, much higher than the median New Zealand salary. This slide shows the full suite of our undergraduate health science programs. We have two certificates, which are entry pathway. We have the Bachelor of Health Science with its seven majors, and we have two graduate diplomas for those who have degrees. I'm now gonna pass you to Dr. Judy Thomas, who's gonna tell you in detail more about our exciting bachelor's program. 
Tenakoto, my name is Dr. Judy Thomas, and I'm the program leader for the Bachelor of Health Science. Massey's Bachelor of Health Science is a unique multidisciplinary program offering a wide range of health majors for you to choose from. The interaction of factors affecting health and well-being is really complex, and this program will give you the skills that you need to help address and solve some of the major health challenges facing New Zealand and the world. It is not a medical program. Instead, this is an interdisciplinary program, including study of science and bioscience, but also the social and psychological determinants affecting health, public health principles, and health of Māori. You will also study courses in communication, critical thinking skills, and research methods to help you build a career in any of New Zealand's major health sectors. There are no special entry requirements for this program beyond those that you would need for entry into university study. The degree is 360 credits, that is 24 courses and each is worth 15 credits. That's equivalent to three years full-time study, but you can choose to study part-time to fit your study around work and family commitments. Of the 24 courses, 12 of the courses are compulsory core across all of the majors. And then you have eight specialist courses specific to your major and four electives you can choose to build a program around your special interests. So these are the core courses. Three of the courses are health science courses. Three courses are related to public health. Two courses are around Māori Health Foundations. And then you have other courses related to epidemiology, research methods, and systems thinking for health. In your first year, you will study six of these core courses and you will be allowed to choose two electives. As you go into two and 300 level courses, you can see now that you're going to be able to specialize more in your major and you will be taking eight courses specific to your major and choosing two more elective courses. A lot of the courses have professional practice integrated into their study so that when you graduate from the program, you can really hit the ground running in your chosen career. The Bachelor of Health Science is delivered primarily by distance using online blended study modes. It is a flexible program, so you can fit it around your work or other family commitments. If you want the on-campus experience, some courses are delivered on one of our three physical campuses. And some courses also have a contact workshop so you can get to know the other students. Massey University has long-standing reputation for being a leader in high quality distance learning and is known for its pastoral care of students, whether they're on site or distance. These are our seven majors, environmental health, health promotion, health services navigation, integrated human health, mental health and addiction, occupational health and safety, and psychology. We will now learn more about these majors from each of our major leaders. Hi all, my name is Nick Kim and I'm the subject leader for the environmental health major, which is the area to do with the protection of human health from hazards in the natural and built environments. As such, it's a very broad major and in the eight courses that make it up, uh, you'll study things like uh, toxic substances, uh, food safety and human health, environmental health law, epidemiology and communicable diseases, uh, safe drinking water and waste treatment, environmental monitoring, sort of how to measure for things that might harm human health, uh, keeping people safe from the excess effects of noise and how to measure for too much noise. And also even uh, how to protect people after disasters occur, like an earthquake or tsunami. So protecting public health after those types of events. So quite a broad range of uh, topics within the major. And um, the main reason for that is that we're training a very practical degree towards two main careers. One is the environmental health officer, 
uh, who work at city or district councils, and the other is a health protection officer who work at district health boards, health hospital boards. Those uh, HPOs, the second category, have been quite visible this year because they also uh, have a role in contact tracing. Um, but in fact, HPOs and EHOs have been with us for many years, uh, working in the background, uh, doing a wide range of jobs, um, always with the focus of protecting human health. Uh, this major is also offered as a graduate diploma of environmental health, uh, where uh, students with a suitable bachelor's degree, usually in science or health, can take the same eight courses uh, to have or get a graduate diploma, and that will also qualify them to become a, an EHO or an HPO. Um, so if you're studying in this area, this area uh, we've got a mixture of students who are doing the Bachelor of Health Science for the Environmental Health major and the Graduate Diploma of Environmental Health. All of the courses can be studied at distance, uh, but for five of the eight courses in this major, um, we also have a contact workshop component where uh, you'll need to travel to Wellington uh, once during the course uh, for between two and five days. Uh, here you'll get to pick up some very practical skills and also meet all of the other uh, students who are studying with you um, from around New Zealand and into the same major. If you do make the choice of this major, I, I look forward to seeing you uh, during one of those contact workshops when you come here to Wellington. Tēnā koutou katoa. Ko Suzanne Phipps Tokui Noa. I am the major leader for the Bachelor of Health Science major in Health Promotion. Graduates on this program will learn about creating healthy environments and the places in which people work, live and play. They will be able to design, implement and evaluate health promotion programs. Our graduates have found employment in Iwi health service providers, Pacific health service providers, non-government organisations, DHBs and the Ministry of Health. The Bachelor of Health Science major in health promotion at Massey University is aligned with the competencies for health promotion that are set out by the Health Promotion Forum of New Zealand. So why don't you come in and join us? We would love to see you. Ka kite. Hi everyone, my name is Gretchen Good and I'm here to introduce you to the Health Services Navigation Major. This is designed to meet the growing needs for professionals who can assist individuals and families to navigate complex health, disability and social service systems. In the Health Services Navigation Major, you could become a health or disability navigator, a connector, a service coordinator, a case manager or a rehabilitation counselor. You will learn skills such as advocacy and case management, leadership and teamwork. You could seek a career in corrections, addictions, mental health, disability, education, policy, public health, community development, health or rehabilitation. Why study health services navigation at Massey? Well, most of our courses are offered from a distance and we are flexible and accommodating. Our courses are generally small and you can get a lot of individualized attention. And Massey is the first university to offer this course in New Zealand. There is a real need in New Zealand and overseas for graduates who have these skills. So come join us and make a difference. I'm Dr. Barry Palmer and I'm the major leader for integrated human health in the B Health Science degree and I'm based at Massey's Wellington campus. The integrated human health major gives students the opportunity to study a broad range of subjects uh, reflecting the multidisciplinary nature of health sciences. Uh, so uh, within um, health sciences, um, the, within this major there's an emphasis on um, three broad subjects, uh, community nutrition, uh, sports and exercise, and sleep-wake studies. Uh, so you study all of those uh, subjects and um, using the electives uh, within the major, you can put a particular spin on it uh, to reflect your interests. 
The integrated human health major was originally designed for students um, that were intending to go on and do postgraduate studies, for instance, masters or PhD, but it's also a, an excellent major for those who are thinking of careers in health and wellness clinics, uh, as health coaches, um, as health advisors in major corporations, and also with um, further study, you could teach health and health related subjects at high school. So we think this is a, a great opportunity uh, for those that want a broad based um, flavor to their degree um, and a, an interesting multidisciplinary option uh, in your studies. Kia ora koutou, ko Andy Towers toko ingoa. I co-lead the mental health and addiction major at Massey University with Dr. Chrissy Severinsen. This major is for those of you who are looking to take on leadership roles in the mental health and addiction sector in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Instead of using a medical framework to understand mental health and addiction, we use a social, community and public health focus. That means we cover, as well as key concepts in mental health and addiction, a much broader array of knowledge, including public health approaches, social and community healthy skills, engagement with Māori and Pacific communities, and key points on te reo Māori and tikanga. Graduates of this major are likely to be employed either in government or community organisations in a range of different roles, including as advisors, as educators, as advocates, as health promoters, and as programme coordinators. By the end of 2021, graduates of this major may also be eligible for provisional registration and accreditation with DAPANS, which is the Drug and Alcohol Practitioners Association of Aotearoa New Zealand. Koto, my name is Associate Professor Ian Laird and I lead the Occupational Health and Safety Programme at Massey University uh, and coordinate the Occupational Health and Safety major in the Bachelor of Health Science degree. As we spend a third of our lives at work, workplaces contribute significantly to our health and the burden of ill health and injury in New Zealand society. Creating healthy workplaces is a key outcome and focus for Massey's Occupational Health and Safety Programme and is fundamentally concerned with the interrelationship of people at work, the work they undertake, and the work environment. In the Occupational Health and Safety major of the Bachelor of Health Science, you will learn about hazards and risks in the workplace, assessing and managing those risks, and creating healthy workplaces. Graduates from Massey's Occupational Health and Safety programs can be found as health and safety managers, advisors, and coordinators in government departments, such as WorkSafe New Zealand, ACC, and New Zealand Defence Force, also district health boards, regional councils, as well as small and medium-sized enterprises and larger businesses. The eight courses of the Occupational Health and Safety major are internationally accredited by the Institution of Occupational Safety and Health UK, which leads to registration in New Zealand as an Occupational Health and Safety practitioner. The Massey University major in Occupational Health and Safety in the Bachelor of Health Science reflects the multidisciplinary nature of occupational health and safety and is one of the few qualifications where graduates make a significant difference in preventing injury and ill health in the workplace. Kia ora koutou. The Bachelor of Health Science Psychology major is distinct from the BA or BSc in Psychology as you are able to combine a multidisciplinary study of health with a strong applied focus in psychology. In your first and second year, alongside your health science core, you will take courses that include both social science focused psychology, including topics like social psychology and clinical psychology, and natural science focused psychology, including topics like memory, learning, sleep, and the role of the brain in producing behavior. In your third year, you get to do a variety of courses that are particularly relevant to the health sciences, including health psychology, abnormal and therapeutic psychology, community psychology, and psychological assessment. To be a registered psychologist, you will need to do additional postgraduate study after you complete your bachelor's degree. 
The Bachelor of Health Science in Psychology allows you to do all of the specialist postgraduate psychology programs, including clinical psychology and health psychology. If further study is not what you want to do after you graduate, the major in psychology opens the doors to a number of opportunities for work, including in counseling, human resources, public health, youth support, policy, rehabilitation, special education, social services and community support agencies, and in justice policing or armed services careers. For more information, please contact the major leader for psychology, who is Dr. Stephen Hill. Kapai major leaders for telling us about your exciting disciplines. Some of you may be looking to simply dip your toes in tertiary study. Some of you may already be working in the health industry, but don't hold a degree or qualification. If this applies to you, then we have two certificate options that should be of interest. We have the Certificate in Public Health and the Certificate in Mental Health and Addiction. Both of these consist of four, year, four courses and they can be completed as one year of part-time study while you are working. One of the exciting things about these is they provide a route to staircase into the full degree program, either immediately when you complete the certificate or in the future. Some of you might be considering changing careers, pivoting to a new career in health. If you already hold a degree in almost anything, then we have two graduate diploma options that should be of interest. We have the graduate diploma in environmental health and the graduate diploma in occupational health and safety. These consist of the eight specialization courses that are part of the bachelor's program and they can be completed either as one year of full-time study or over three years while you work in industry and you look to change careers. This slide puts together all the pathways we have in health science, from the entry pathway with the certificate through to the three years bachelor's program, the two pathways if you already have an existing degree and you want to move into health, the two graduate diploma, or once you have graduated and perhaps you've worked in the industry for a period, then you might want to come back and do some more advanced material uh, to specialize in your career. If that's you, then you might want to consider our postgraduate diplomas and our Master of Health Science. We have a wide range of specializations in both of these. One's full, one year full time, the other's one and a half years full time. If you're looking to specialize in public health, then our two years Masters of Public Health should appeal to you. And finally, if you're looking to do research in the health sector, then the three year doctorate or PhD program should appeal. So what are some of the financial support available to you in study? If you are new to study, then the fees free equivalent first year should apply to you. If you are looking to study mental health and addiction, either in the certificate or in the bachelor's program, or you're looking to do psychology in our Bachelor of Health Sciences program, then you may be eligible for the Te Rauapuawai Māori Mental Health Workforce Development Scholarships. There's a link on this slide and you can look it up on the website to find out more information. I'll now pass you back to Dr. Judy Thomas to conclude this presentation. Kapai. Massey University is proud to offer a strong multidisciplinary Bachelor of Health Science program with seven exciting majors. Certificate study is available for students who want to dip their toes into tertiary study or upskill if already in the health industry. Graduate programs are also available for students who already have an existing degree but want to pivot into the health industry. Massey has a long-standing reputation for being a leader in distance learning and pastoral care of its students, whilst ensuring that students get the skill that they need to hit the ground running in the health workforce. For more information, please go to our Massey University Bachelor of Health Science web pages, and we look forward to meeting you soon.
Tēnā koutou, uh, ko Andy Towers toko ingoa. My name's Andy and I'm here to give you a little bit of information about the Certificate in Mental Health and Addiction at Mass University. First thing you want to know is probably uh, who the certificate is for. Uh, what we've designed this certificate for uh, are those people that personally value respect, aroha and hope. And that may sound a little bit trite, but that is exactly who we need in the mental health and addiction sector right now. Uh, those values are absolutely paramount in turning around what we have uh, in terms of the issues and the barriers we have for people to seek well-being. Uh, secondly, we want to have those people in the certificate who work, want to work purposely with others and challenge the, the, the status quo and the social injustices and the exclusion that we currently see in the sector. So if you're passionate about social justice and about um, inclusion of others, then we want to see you. Third, we want to see those people who really care about promoting and sustaining mental health and well-being, and not only in individuals, but also in whānau and in communities. So our focus in this sector and in, in the certificate is not only about individuals, it's about the spectrum from individuals right through to society. Now those people could be school leavers, they could be people uh, leaving school and thinking, I'm not sure what I want to do, so you can dip your toes into the area with this short certificate. Um, they could be those already working in the sector who just want to upskill, because a number of people working in the sector don't currently have uh, qualifications but are seeking them. Um, or it could be other people who are working and just in a different area and they want to retrain. Um, that is exactly who we want. Uh, and if you sit in some of our classes, what you'll see is some of our students are ranged from 18 years old through to 60. So that is who we want. We want you if you're passionate and caring. What does the certificate give you? Firstly, the whole certificate in mental health and addiction is designed to create pathways for support workers to develop and enhance the practice. Like I said, many don't currently, uh, many who are working there don't currently have uh, qualifications. So this is exactly why we've developed the certificate in mental health and addiction for that purpose, to provide them pathways to um, educate and enhance the practice. We also teach the best practice engagement skills and primary healthcare approaches. And these are skills that are definitely needed in the area. And uh, third, the NZQA, this, the certificate in mental health addiction is an NZQA level five qualification. That is um, higher than the minimum qualification needed, which is a level four in the sector. And also being a level five qualification, it means that afterwards, if you want a little bit more training, you can, seamlessly transition into our level six bachelor's degree. Can't do that with a level four qualification, but you can do it with our level five. You go straight into a bachelor's degree and you would have already completed some of the core courses. Now, what skills are we talking about that this is delivering? The entire certificate and the wider major in mental health and addiction in our bachelor's programs is designed around the DAPAN's foundation competencies for support work. And uh, TAPANS is the Drug and Alcohol Practitioners Association of Aotearoa New Zealand. And they have a set of very clear competences that they, they want to see in graduates. And that's exactly what we've designed this around. Secondly, um, TAPO is the um, uh, Mental Health, Disability and Addictions Workforce Development Agency. And they have a let's get real skill set that they would like to see in the area and all graduates. That's also integrated throughout a certificate and also our major in the Bachelor of Health Science. And Matsuraki Addictions training materials are what we use to provide a very clear guidance on um, uh, interacting with people with addictions. And Matsuraki is the addictions face of TAPO. So we are using uh, information, materials and guidance from the best heads in the area. Now, what is the certificate? What's the CERT MHA? Uh, like I said, it's an NZQA level five certificate. Um, and that means it's 60 credits or four courses. Now we've designed the certificate to be completed part-time. And so um, a, a, a normal full-time workload for a bachelor's degree is eight courses across an entire year, four in the first semester and four in the second semester. This certificate is designed part-time and you can do it in one year, so two courses in first semester and two courses in second semester. And we've designed it that way because we know a number of people, many, many people taking the certificate already, they are 
working already in the sector or they're working in another job and they want to retrain but they can't leave their jobs and so by making this a part-time um, certificate it allows them to stay at home and it allows them to um, study and upskill while also running a household paying the bills so that's why this was designed as a part-time program and you can't complete it in six months it has to be done across a year at a minimum um, if you wanted to do it two years, you can as well. If you, if you don't have enough time to, to uh, do it in one year, you can do it in two years, which would mean you do one course per semester. And finally, it's designed online. It's designed as distance study for those people, like I said, who are working, uh, Kaitaia and the Bluff, all across the country. We have students who are taking either the certificate or the major in mental health and the Bachelor of Health Science, and they take it online because they are working and they'd like to study from home. They don't want to come to campus. They don't want to shift their families. So if you like online study or, or distance study or you just don't want to move, then we can absolutely cater for you. All right, what does it look like? The courses in the, the CERT MHA are split, like I said. If you do it in one year, it's split across two semesters. So in your first semester, you're going to be encountering the theory courses. So those theory courses um, uh, 147, 102, fuck a pity, which is engagement in mental health and addiction work. That's my course. And you'll also do 231, 106, introduction to public health. And so those two uh, courses are very synergistic. They have very similar underlying concepts and models and themes. And by the time you get to the end of semester one, you're going to have a very strong understanding of what the social determinants are and approaches are to both mental health addictions and public health much more broadly. So it's a very, very, very good toolkit to have going into second semester. Because in second semester, those are your practice courses. You leave your theory courses behind and you look at practice courses. Now, 150103, No My In Noho, will be one of those courses. And that, that is the course that equips you with some of the skills to engage with, with Māori, both, both individuals and Māori communities. And that is run by our colleagues in Te Pūtahi Atoi, which is uh, the School of Māori Knowledge. The second practice course is 179155, and that's an introduction to helping skills. And that's run by our colleagues in the social work program. It's a core social work course, and they have been very nice in allowing our students in because these are exactly the skills that uh, TIPO, let's get real skills. Uh, those are exactly the skills that we need in the sector. So first year, first semester is your theory courses, second semester is your practice and then you're done. And when you are done, and if you don't already have a job, what can you do and where can you go? A number of different roles, a, a wide variety of roles. So you can do support work, you can do advocacy work, youth work, um, if you, youth or aged care work, it, it's up to you. If you have already also um, experience of uh, mental health and addiction or one or the other, then you can also fulfill peer support work roles with this um, certificate of mental health and addiction. And the peer support work role in particular is set to really take off in the next five years. We know there's a need in the sector for those people with lived experience. And so having a certificate like this behind you and experience of mental health and or addictions is absolutely gold. You'll be, you'll be um, snapped up quickly. And secondly, where would you work? Anywhere in the health sector, district health boards, local government boards, um, NGOs, a number of services, uh, both uh, Māori and non-Māori, government agencies, aged care sector, public health units. There are so many possible jobs you could do with a certificate of mental health, particularly in the, the broad public health space. It's incredible. So you, there are definitely roles to fulfill. Now, what if you want more? So if you complete your certificate and then you think, actually, I'd like to upskill and do a bit more study. I really like this. We've designed the Certificate in Mental Health and Addiction to staircase directly into our major in Mental Health and Addiction in the Bachelor of Health Science. So like I said, you can take this uh, Level 5 uh, certificate and study now in a Level 6 Bachelor's degree. And that's for those who are seeking leadership roles in the Mental Health and Addiction sector. You can go straight in to this Bachelor's and you already would have covered some of the key courses that you need for that Bachelor's degree. For those of you who might want to go on but not necessarily do mental health and addiction, you can also explore other majors, other programs such as psychology, social work, health promotion, and others at Massey University. The world's your oyster. Lastly, who can you talk to? Um, you can talk to me. 
Uh, here are my details. Uh, I'm at Massey. If you can't remember anything, just remember Andy Towers and ring up 0800 Massey and they'll put you through to me and we can have a chat about uh, the program, about certificates and whether it's right for you. And if I'm not there, you can definitely get in contact with Dr. Chrissy Severinsen, um, same phone number. Uh, Dr. Chrissy Severinsen is my co-lead for the broader mental health and addiction program. Kakiti, good luck. Tēnā koutou katoa, nō te kūne nā ki pūri huroa ahau. He aho rangi tō hono ahau ki te kūra ho ora tangata. Ko Mary Brennan, tō kua noa. Thank you for your interest in the Certificate of Public Health. We are really proud of this program and the ways that it provides a foundational course to upskill the public health workforce in Aotearoa. It also provides a pathway to further study for those who are inspired to continue to study health sciences. Mm -hmm. In this presentation, I will introduce you to the program. If you want to find out more, please make contact with us. We are always excited to welcome new students into the study of public health. You may have been particularly inspired to study public health through the discussion of public health in the media during the pandemic. Public health has been defined as the art and science of preventing disease, prolonging life, and promoting health through the organized efforts of society. The study of public health is the right choice for anyone who wants to improve population health and promote health equity. This qualification is ideal for those already working in the public health workforce who want to achieve an entry level qualification. If you are already in a public health position, you may be able to apply for a fees grant from the Ministry of Health to support your study. This qualification is also ideal if you want to shift to a career in public health. So what will you learn through this qualification? You will learn how to use research and evaluation to improve your public health practice and knowledge. You'll be introduced to community-based interventions and how these can be used to promote population health. You'll learn about public health policy and the role of advocacy in public health. A key aspect of the program is understanding health inequalities and learning how to address these to improve community health outcomes. The Certificate of Public Health is a level five certificate you will complete 60 credits of coursework. This is four courses. The program can only be completed part-time. You can choose to complete over one year or take longer. This makes it ideal to fit around your work, family and community commitments. The program is available online by distance. As I said, you complete four courses. There are two compulsory courses, Introduction to Public Health and Health Intervention Management. Every Certificate of Public Health student must complete these courses. There are four electives from which you must complete two. These are Hawara Tangata, Applied Sciences for Health Professionals, Social Determinants of Health, and Health Communication. If you are not sure which courses to choose, or which to start with, please do get in touch and we can advise you which courses would be best for your situation. Once you've completed this program, you'll be prepared to take on roles such as a health promoter or a community health worker, youth worker or health coach. You may work in local or central government or for iwi, social service or public health units. If you want to continue on with your studies after this, your Certificate in Public Health staircases directly onto the Bachelor of Health Sciences. You may be interested in further study in health promotion, mental health and addiction, or psychology. Thank you again for your interest in our program. If you want to contribute to improving the health of your community, 
then this may be just the program to start you off on your journey. We would love to support you, support you to make this happen. Please contact us if you want more information on the program or to see how Massey University and the Certificate of Public Health can change your future. Kia ora mai tātou. Yeah, good evening, um, kia ora koutou. Uh, welcome to the session on studying sport and, uh, and exercise at Massey. My name is Dr Matt Barnes and uh, just in a moment we're going to be joined by uh, my colleague Dr Claire Badenhorst who's based up in Albany. So Claire will fill us in on what they've got on offer up, up there. Um, we're just going to go through um, what, it, what it means to study sport and exercise and we'll go over your options um, whether you're interested in studying internally or distance. Um, we'll talk about some job opportunities and, and really the, the nuts and bolts of our program and then ultimately to finish off with we'll talk about um, why you should come to us and not go somewhere else. Um, so to start with why, why study sport and exercise? Well like many of our students you probably um, or you may be already involved in sport, maybe you're an athlete, maybe you're coaching um, or you might just be doing PE and you want to see where your passion um, takes you. And personally, I think if you've got a passion for something, you're going to do far better at university than if you come and study something that just sort of you may be slightly interested in. Um, but if you've got a passion, you should follow that passion as far as you can. Um, often when we think about studying sport and exercise, we think about the glamorous side of that. And um, often we think about things like working with elite athletes. And now while that's an option, uh, and there are plenty of opportunities out there. We've got graduates that um, are working with the Hurricanes, with New Zealand football. Um, we've had people working with the Phoenix, um, all sorts of different high, uh, high performing uh, roles across the country and internationally as well. Um, so there are opportunities in that sense. However, when we look at the, the issues facing society, we've got an aging population. Uh, so it's particularly true of the, um, the European population. Now the demographics are quite different for some other um, ethnicities. Um, but what we're seeing is as, as um, our population ages, there's a greater demand for physical activity and maintaining uh, function. So while there are opportunities to work with the elite, um, more more importantly probably is ensuring that our aging population maintains good function and health and additionally that our youth grow up wanting to be active. You know, the, the, um, the statistics around inactivity are really really poor in New Zealand um, so we need to be encouraging both ends of the spectrum to be as physically active as possible and if we can do that then we're going to have a much healthier happier uh, society and that's something we should all be aiming for. So when we thought about those challenges um, and the opportunities that the, the industry offers, uh, we redesigned our Bachelor of Sport and Exercise. And this is our main program that we offer at Massey. Claire will talk to you about an alternative program offered out of Albany um, in a moment. Um, but we looked at the challenges facing society and we looked at the job opportunities and we came up with some aims of this degree. And firstly, we want to influence youth and promote lifelong physical activity and we, we reach that by um, ensuring our students as they come through they become excellent physical educators so they can go out and they can influence the role or the choices um, that students students make and the youth make. Uh, then we also focus on prescribing exercise and physical activity for the wider population so that that includes um, the elderly youth um, our high, uh, high performing athletes. Um, and then thirdly and lastly, we want to promote and develop and manage sport and physical activity initiatives at the community and professional organisational levels. So that's encouraging people to participate in, uh, in physical activity. Maybe that's working with Sport Mano Two or one of the regional sports trusts or, or perhaps a national sporting body. Now the Bachelor of Sport and Exercise can be done over three years or longer, we've got a lot of students who take it, um, take it part time, often from overseas if they're athletes, they may be competing overseas and the opportunity uh, to study by distance allows them that flexibility. 
There's no specific entry requirements. So as long as you can come to university, you can come and study the Bachelor of Sport and Exercise. What I would suggest is that if you're planning to do exercise prescription or physical education, you should be doing physical education and biology at school. And that's not compulsory, but it's certainly going to set you up well for your first year. If you haven't done that, then don't worry. We give you everything you need to know um, in your first year. So the first year, as I'll talk about in the next slide, is really a foundational year. We set the platform for what you need in your second and third year and, uh, and beyond, of course. Now, the Bachelor of Sport and Exercise can be completed internally, so face-to-face -face in Palmerston North, or we do have an option for, uh, for our distance students. Um, and one of the benefits of this program compared to some of the other sport and exercise um, programs around the country is that all of our students will do a uh, practicum in their third year. So this is applying your knowledge and your skills that you've built up over the first two years into a work experience situation. And the benefit of doing this is not only to prepare you for, for work, but it also often leads to employment. Many of our students end up in jobs at the, uh, at the location where they did the practicum. So this is really beneficial. Um, you get that, that, um, that work experience and a, a great chance to network. <clears throat> okay, so what will you study when you come to us in the Bachelor of Sport and Exercise? All of our students in first year take uh, core topics. We do an, an intro to physical education. So if, you, if you're doing PE at the moment and you sort of reflect on what your PE teacher does, then this is kind of teaching you that side of things. Uh, we look at intro to human movement in Hawara, um, sort of a, a Maori perspective on human movement and health. We do a communications course because we expect you to be able to communicate in lots of different ways. We do some training principles, some functional anatomy and physiology in there, some sociology, so where does sport sit in sociology? And then you get an introduction to sporting organisations and, and their role in development. Along with this, what we'd expect you to come out of from your degree, and probably any degree, are what we call the soft skills. And these are communication skills, the ability to interact with peers and others, having self-confidence and an ability to manage your time. Okay, you're not going to have someone standing over you the whole time, holding your hand, making sure you're working hard and doing, doing your, your work. Um, so these are things that you will need to learn and develop. And these, and these tend to be the things that um, employers look for. So irrespective of your background and, and the degree that you do, an employer really wants to see that you've, you've got these skills that are in red here because they're translatable into any, into any task. Now, the, the specialisations, we've got three specialisations in um, the Bachelor of Sport and Exercise. Um, our first one, not to say it's our most important, it, it is the one that I look after, so perhaps I'm slightly um, biased here, um, but this is exercise prescription. And this is really ideal if you have an interest in um, improving people's health and well-being and perhaps improving their performance. Jobs that, that come from this are, are jobs like personal trainers, although we should be aiming higher than that. Um, team trainers, so those elite kind of roles that I talked about. Um, injury and disease rehabilitation. Um, one of the things we get our students to do in their third year in this, um, in this specialization, they get to work in a clinic and they'll work with people who may have had a stroke or some sort of cardiovascular event, or they may have multiple sclerosis or Parkinson's. So it sets the, the uh, students up very well for, uh, for anything they're going to face in real life. Um, you may also become a health and fitness advocacy, so going into businesses and setting things up, um, and also getting roles in um, primary health organisations. This specialisation is recognised by the Register of Exercise Professionals New Zealand, um, so that's the preferred register um, that most employers in the fitness industry are looking at. I should point out that the fitness industry um, is worth about $500 million uh, to the economy in New Zealand. The sporting, uh, sport and exercise industry is worth over $10 billion. So it's actually a massive industry to get into, lots of opportunities. And this is the sort of thing you'll, you'll learn in exercise prescription. So you're going to get a, a good idea about how the body uh, works and how it adapts to exercise. You'll get to um, understand how to assess and prescribe for a range of populations. There's some sport nutrition in there. And then you'll understand how the brain um, 
learns and um, develops um, skill acquisition. We give you all the skills that you need uh, when dealing with, with clients um, in a real world setting. Our second um, specialization is physical education. This, like the last one, is available face to face in one or two. This is ideal if you want to become a PE teacher. Um, most of our, many of our students go on to secondary, teaching in secondary, but there are huge opportunities in the primary sector. Um, you could probably think back to who you had at primary school and it was probably an old lady teaching you. Um, we need to change that. We need to get youth who are in, uh, interested in physical activity into these roles uh, and make a positive change. Um, there's also opportunities to work as a school or community sports coordinator. A number of our students will go back to the schools that they've come from and pick up jobs um, working either as a teacher or as a community as a um, school sports coordinator. The big focus in this um, specialization is making sure you understand how to teach. OK, so this pedagogy, so learning to teach and instruct sport, physical education and other aspects of physical activity. Um, you'll understand how the body works. So the sports sciences, um, there's a focus on holder. Um, we look at Maori perspectives of health and well-being, um, and it's linked to the, the current PE curriculum. So it's really setting you up nicely to take that step into, into a teaching role. Students that do this um, will use their five, their five electives or four electives uh, and pick up a second teaching subject. And what I would suggest is if you want to make yourself really attractive, um, you should be doing sciences or maths as a second teaching subject because that's where the shortfall is in the education system at the moment. Uh, and all students will go on to um, do, a, can choose to go on and do a one year primary or secondary teaching qualification. Our final um, specialization is offered face to face a month or two, but also completely by distance. OK, so you don't need to be on campus at all for this uh, for the specialization. And this is really um, setting students up to, to tackle the world of um, physical activity and sport in lots of different ways. As you can see there, um, we're talking about the initiation, promotion, support and management of physical activity at the volunteer, regional and national organisational levels. And there's lots of job opportunities there, very broad um, in terms of sports coordination, events organisers, facility management, um, sport coaching and, and other roles. And in this specialisation, you'll learn the ins and outs um, of the, the sports industry. Um, you'll understand event facility management, sport business. You'll do some pedagogy so you know how to uh, pass on information to people. There's some coaching in there, the science of coaching, as opposed to the art of coaching one sport. Um, you'll understand the, the role sport plays in the community. And then there's some sports psychology in there as well. We also have a strong focus in here on te Kore, the world of movement um, and how that interacts with health promotion. So that's the Bachelor of Sport and Exercise. Um, I'm going to pass you over now to Claire up in Albany and she's going to talk to you about what we've got on offer up there. Over to you, Claire. Hi everyone, um, thank you for having me and thanks for that introduction, um, Matt. So as Matt said, we offer a slightly different major up here in Albany. Uh, we have the Bachelor of Science of which you can major in exercise and sports science. Now this course is um, slightly different to what is done in Palmerston North um, and it has a very strong um, basis in the I guess a theory and research and practical application of the sports science component. So our core units actually tend to be um, exercise physiology. So understanding how all the different body systems adapt to exercise and sport performance. We, um, we look at sports psychology. So how athletes and people um, think how they're motivated in sport, how do they adapt and deal with injuries um, and actually do this to improve their sporting performance as well. And then we've also got the elements of biomechanics as well. So learning how the body moves and how we can maximize that movement performance. And then of course, sports nutrition as well. So it's this really nice link of um, the human body, how it adapts and evolves with exercise and sport with that really nice strong science um, coming through um, 
the entire major as well. So uh, I guess compared to some of the courses down in Palmerston North, which focus either on sports development, physical education, teaching and exercise prescription, the Bachelor of Science has elements from, I guess, the exercise prescription part, um, but looks at more how we can apply this in, um, I guess, overall training settings um, and how we can use our research knowledge in order to apply some of that sports science. So we have a lot of practical skills which are tied into that um, as well. If you wouldn't mind going to the next slide for me, please, Matt. So this course is pretty much ideal for um, people that are interested in either studying in Auckland. Um, we also have a lot of our courses moving online, so you can um, possibly do quite a few of these courses um, through a bit more of a distance one, but we do offer quite a lot of internal teaching here um, at Auckland. It's done if you um, have that interest in sports science, and as Matt said, if you've got a passion within that area and you would like to pursue the area of sports science, but you're looking at something that can relate to maybe a, a couple of other science courses, this actually tends to be a really good major for you to enroll in and become involved in. So you're getting that element of strong scientific basis or broad scientific basis, which we often have in our first year. And then we actually get a bit more specialized with you in terms of your skill, your understanding and your knowledge as we get into our third um, or second and third year, because this is effectively a three year major as well. So you will develop quite a strong and broad set of skills, not only related to um, sports science, but a lot of that practical application and testing, which can be used in a range of um, job placements. So we see um, graduates going into um, sports specific environments, whether that be personal training or um, sports specific training. We also see students getting involved in the health and occupational sector as well. We have a lot of students going on placements into um, I guess sports specific areas, high performance sport, um, and also a lot of students progressing on to um, either uh, masters in um, nutrition, dietetics or within sports research as well. But effectively you should come out of this course with enough knowledge to call yourself a sports scientist, but also have a very strong set of skills that allows you to um, implement and carry out the job which you need as well. So it's um, one of those really good majors that gives you a really strong basis and wherever you've got that passion and that drive to take that opportunity into the health or the sporting sector, the, I guess, scientific skills, the uh, practical skills, and of course those soft skills, which Matt talked to you about, um, will set you up in a really good um, place in order to pursue whatever career goals you have within the fitness and health profession. Um, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, please, Matt. So as I said, um, we, uh, with this course being a bit more of a Bachelor of Science, we do have a couple of entry level requirements which are listed there. Um, so you do have to have um, a bit of a biology, a bit of chemistry and mathematics. However, um, it, being a Bachelor of Science, there are ways in which you can um, cover this either in your first year as well or through um, a bit of summer school. Now, the new structure of the Bachelor of Science actually has us um, providing students with a pretty much a very general first year in terms of science courses. So getting everyone up to the standard um, that they can pursue whatever scientific program they wish to major in. But of course, if you choose to major in sports science, we do give you a couple of um, sports science or core courses to first uh, dip your toe into a little bit in first year. So you get introduced to um, anatomy of the human body. So learning how it moves and all those different um, elements in your body, which is really um, intriguing and fun for students because you're actually looking and learning about your human body. And then of course we get into a bit more of the biology as well. So really fun and engaging first year there. 
Then we move into second year where we start introducing some more sports science specific courses. So um, you got your physiology coming in, your biomechanics. So of course, how the body moves, how it functions, um, how we actually learn movements, and then of course, how we actually, um, or how our metabolism works as well. And then the third year, we actually look to transfer some of that knowledge from second year and start applying it. So we have a new course now that actually looks at integrating our understanding of biomechanics, psychology and physiology and applying this within a sporting setting. So really encouraging our students to take the knowledge that they have and apply it so that they're hitting the ground running ahead of everyone else by the time they finish with their major. And we also then layer in those other um, areas, so sports nutrition, nutrition and sports psychology so that our, the sports scientists that we produce through this major and through pretty much both of the courses that Matt and I are talking about have a really strong holistic understanding of the human body and how to get the best out of it in both health and the sporting environment. Thanks Matt, I think I'm back over to you. Thanks Claire. <clears throat> so that's that's what we do um, and you could jump online and you could hear probably a similar talk from um, from any of the other universities around the country I'll be honest with you um, many sports degrees uh, are very similar um, however there are some unique reasons why you should come and study sport at Massey um, we have very passionate and experienced staff um, many of our staff have been and currently are involved in sport um, at all, all levels, whether that's as uh, athletes, Claire herself here as uh, as a national representative triath uh, triathlete. Um, we've got coaches, we've got people working for Baseball New Zealand. Um, we've, we've got all sorts of experience uh, Olympic coaches. Um, so we're we're not only sort of talking the talk, but we we pretty much all walk the walk as well. Um, so that sort of knowledge that we can add to your sort of formal learning is invaluable. Uh, we can pass on some, some first-hand experience that can save you a lot of time and, and sort of shortcut your, uh, your way to success. Uh, all of our programs are, are highly practical. Okay, there's lots of hands-on uh, opportunities to apply your, your knowledge, but you also get that strong theoretical underpinning. So it's not just um, you know, a, a, a degree for jocks. You do have to have a bit of a brain, you have to, be, be ready to work and understand some fairly complicated um, situa situations and, and knowledge. Um, we've got strong links to community and industry as, as we've given you some examples, lots of sporting organisations uh, around the country. We tend to have relatively small class sizes and this, this means that there's a lot of, um, a lot of opportunity for good close interaction with, uh, with our lecturers. We have a really good, um, really good relationship with our students. Um, we had a visiting academic from overseas recently and he, he, he remarked on that. He said he doesn't know his students anywhere near as well as we do. And I think that's really important for, for success. And that's what our job is. It's, we're here for, for you and, and to make sure you succeed. Um, we've got a great student culture, that, that small class size, but also um, our students come through in, in pretty tight cohorts. They get to know each other. There's opportunities to work alongside each other. Um, and these form lifelong relationships um, and you never know when a, net, when a network colleague or, or friend can, can be of help down the track. In terms of pastoral care, we offer our students um, mentoring programs. So at this stage, you would be uh, allocated to a staff member and they will look after you through your first year in particular. Make sure that you um, manage your time correctly, that we answer any questions that you have uh, and just touch base whether that's um, you know, coming around to, to someone's house and having a barbecue or having some virtual beers online. Um, in, in the current situation, we, we make sure that you're getting the most out of your education and the experience. Um, we've got uh, one, of the, one of the main benefits is the locations. And often when we talk to our students, it's the location that dictates where they study. Um, obviously, we've got offerings in Auckland with, uh, with what Claire's talked about. Palmerston North, we've got the Bachelor of Sport and Exercise. Then we've also got distance. And while sport development is offered by distance, many of our other courses are also available by distance. So we can we can tailor your um, 
your degree to suit you. So if you if you want to study by distance, for example, you've got an area in perhaps the sports sciences, you could do the sport development major or specialization and then pick up some of those more sciencey type of uh, type of courses. Lots of flexibility and and one of my jobs is just to work with students to make sure that you're getting exactly what you want out of your out of your program. Um, another reason for studying a Massey, there's a very strong sport and cultural um, community. So lots of good clubs and opportunities there. Um, and our facilities are excellent. Um, in Palmerston North, we have, um, what have we got? Three rugby fields, four football fields, um, a brand new hockey turf that's currently being um, developed, the teaching gym, um, a rec centre. Up in Albany, we have access to similar facilities, an outstanding um, lab. So there's, there's some really good facilities that you'll get to experience and work in. Um, what I haven't put up there, and I will just touch on because we've got a couple of minutes spare, is the, um, the Amasi Academy of Sports Scholarship. Um, so this opens in August, or usually around the 20th, 20th of August. And this is a scholarship that provides athletes with $5,000 scholarship plus entry into the Massey Academy of Sport. And the Massey Academy of Sport provides um, opportunities for strength and conditioning coaching, um, sports psychology, nutrition, um, academics, um, advice, all up the package is probably worth close to $10,000 in your first year. Um, to be eligible, you need to be studying a bachelor's degree, your first bachelor's degree in any topic. It doesn't have to be sport and exercise. Um, and you need to be competing at a representative level, either nationally or internationally. I suggest if this, uh, I can talk to you more about this when we jump into our Zoom meeting um, or you jump online and have a look at the Massey website. Okay, um, just to finish off, last slide, some contact details. Uh, if you want to talk to me about the Bachelor of Sport and Exercise, um, shoot me an email, give me a call. Uh, I would say drop in and see me, but I'm not allowed back in my office for a wee while, so don't bother doing that. Um, Claire, Claire is uh, equally available online, or um, hopefully I've got her right, her correct um, uh, contact number there. Yeah. Hang around, uh, jump on our, our Zoom meeting, and we'll answer any of those direct questions you have. Um, I saw a couple of people raising some questions, so um, pop on over and we will uh, we will have a chat. All good. Thank you very much. Um, we'll see you, see you in a moment. Cool. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Catherine Beck. I'm a lecturer in human nutrition and dietetics up in Albany in Auckland. And we're part of the School of Sport, Exercise and Nutrition. So I guess a bit of food for thought. Why study for a BSc in human nutrition at Massey University? So just a, a few things to think about. Have you ever wondered why your nutrient requirements change across the life stage? So whether you're a baby, a, a child, or even getting older, and you can see from the picture, Obviously, there's different functions that we're carrying out at different times, and we have a different requirement for nutrients as we age. You might be wondering whether it's your genes which make your butt look big, and what can we do about this, or is there something in the food that we eat? Or could what you eat make you faster, perform better, or win you a gold medal at the Olympics? And nutritionists and dietitians are well sought after to support our athletes in terms of um, improving their performance. It may be, how can I run a marathon at 92 rather than pushing a Zimmer frame? So why, why do some people age really well and others age less well? Or could what you eat make you smarter? Is there evidence to suggest that? And this is some of the work that we're actually looking at at Massey University in Auckland. So what is nutrition? Nutrition is the science that supports human life and health. Nutritional science is about providing the body with the right or the essential nutrients and the right amounts to meet the body's requirements in order to optimize performance, 
avoid disease and enjoy a long and healthy life. So human nutrition is really interesting. It's a, a mix of a whole heap of different sciences, but also it takes into account the food, the environment that, that we're eating in. So when we're looking at nutritional science, it encompasses the disciplines of physiology, biochemistry, microbiology, public health, behavioral sciences. So the psychology, how can we help people to eat better? Food science. And those are just a few of the many aspects that nutrition encompasses. So it's a really interesting area. It, I kind of think of it as translating the science into real life guidelines that people can follow for eating. So what, are you, what can you do with a degree in human nutrition? How can you contribute to the world? So there's lots of different areas that our graduates are working in. Public health is one of them. And below, I've just got some examples of some of the public health agencies within New Zealand that people from uh, Massey University in Nutrition have uh, started or been working with. They're looking at the Heart Foundation, the New Zealand Nutrition Foundation, Healthy Families, some of the sports bodies, Activity and Nutrition, Aotearoa, the health promotion agencies, and so on. So public health is assessing how the diet of New Zealanders measures up to their particular needs, promoting health through the surveillance of nutritional status. So we have national nutrition surveys that run approximately every 10 to 15 years, devising and implementing nutrition education strategies, working with community groups to identify nutritional problems and finding effective solutions, or perhaps working with government departments to develop food and nutritional policies. Another area that some of our graduates go into is private practice. So this tends to involve working with different individuals and groups who provide nutritional advice to prevent disease and promote health. So these are people may, or dietitians, nutritionists, may work um, and have clinics which they run with People, either in person or increasingly in the last few weeks online. It may involve doing talks for groups, so it might be corporate health or uh, sports teams. Um, and finally, working with the media. So you'll often see nutritionists called upon to comment in the newspaper, um, on TV, and so on. Industry. The food industry is another area where our graduates are working. So a couple of examples of these companies include Watties, Sanitarium, and New Zealand Beef and Lamb. So working with food companies um, can either be done in a consultancy role or as a full-time advisor where um, you are employed in a full-time position uh, to advise on the nutritional aspects of product development and marketing. Fonterra is another example of a company where our graduates are working as well. Some of the um, responsibilities of our food industry nutritionists include checking that um, foods are meeting the compliance and the food legislation, as well as that ensuring any marketing claims with, related, with relation to nutrition are followed as well. And it may be uh, designing consumer information like infographics, booklets, resources, YouTube videos, or advising um, customers through online chats or online phone calls. Another area where a lot of nutritionists work is in research and academia. So this might be um, going on to do further research um, in a specific area of nutritional interest, whether this is iron deficiency or sports nutrition, maternal and child health. This might be either in a university or one of the Crown Research Institutes or again in the food industry. So Fonterra has employed quite a few of our research qualified uh, nutritionists. There's also opportunities for working in universities for training others and uh, polytechnics as well. And increasingly, a lot of uh, different um, 
industries or companies are invi involving nutritionists to develop short online courses and so on. International organisations may be another area that you end up working with with a nutrition degree. So this might be World Health Organisation, the World Cancer Research Fund, um, World Vision, UNICEF, uh, Food and Agricultural Organisation. And often in these roles, it's working with epidemiologists and statisticians to determine ways of improving population nutrition status. Uh, looking at international food security issues or international nutrition and health related emergencies. Often part of the role might just be con communicating that information across to the public. Um, so for example, how to eat well to prevent uh, cancer or heart disease or diabetes. So common questions, what's a nutritionist versus what's a dietitian? So a nutritionist is a specialist in food and nutrition, nutritional science, and their main role is to help people prevent uh, nutritional deficiencies and nutritional excesses. So deficiencies may be iron deficiencies, excesses may be obesity. So um, different roles that a nutritionist may be involved with are counselling individuals and groups on nutritional practices designed to present prevent disease and promote health. So this might be weight loss, uh, general healthy eating, sports nutrition, working in the food industry to advise on food products or nutrition education. So you are able to register as a nutritionist through the New Zealand Nutritionist Nutrition Society. And to do this, it requires a BSc in human nutrition two to three years work experience or a postgraduate qualification in human nutrition, plus two years uh, professional work experience, and uh, renewal on a yearly basis by just keeping up with continuing professional development. So attending um, seminars, keeping your own learning going. So a dietitian is a nutritionist with a further specialised qualification. So a dietitian is a qualified health professional specialising in nutrition assessment, medical nutrition therapy and counselling to treat disease and micronutrient deficiencies. So probably the key difference between a dietitian and a nutritionist is that a dietitian is able to work in the hospital and clinical setting and advise on different disease states such as eating disorders, uh, renal disease, uh, oncology treatment, um, surgery, uh, uh, Crohn's disease, all the kind of implications that come with uh, being uh, potentially sick and in hospital, a dietitian um, will be there to um, assist with improvement of eating. So the three main areas of competence for uh, dietitians, and this is what we offer through Massey University, is the ability to provide therapeutic nutritional services to patients. So this is in the hospital and also in the community, particularly seeing clients with uh, health issues one-on-one. -on -one. Working in public health nutrition or community nutrition, or alternatively working in food service management to manage food production, quality, food provision and service. Other roles might include working in the sports sector to advise on optimal nutrition, working again in research or education, uh, working as a medical representative for some of the supplement companies or in the food industry. So dietitians register as a dietitian in New Zealand with the New Zealand Dietitians Board. They have a BSc in Human Nutrition and an MSc in Nutrition and Dietetics. And they every year undertake an annual practicing certificate and need to maintain professional development. So you can study dietetics at Massey University. So dietetics is a postgraduate qualification which follows the BSc in, with a major in human nutrition. It's a two-year MSc degree majoring in nutrition and dietetics. 
exact completion, graduates will meet the requirements as set by the New Zealand Dietitians Board for registration as a dietitian. So with this qualification, it essentially enables you to work in clinical nutrition and medical nutrition therapy in the hospital and the community. And it's an accredited program through the uh, Dietitians Board. So if you're thinking about doing a BSc in human nutrition, what sort of things do you need to think about in terms of school? So uh, chemistry and biology are really important subjects. And ideally, if you can do statistics, that um, is preferred. If you are not currently doing chemistry and biology, don't worry, we have a lot of students that are in this position. And you are able to do a summer school introductory course for both chemistry and biology and catch up that way. And those courses are really well supported and um, Chemists that teach those courses have a real interest in helping our students to succeed. These courses can be done uh, on campus or also extramurally. So thinking about your nutrition degree uh, at Massey University, in the first year, there is a course which is called Introduction to Food and Nutrition and this is a really interesting course. It just gets you into the, the zone of uh, nutrition, uh, gets you thinking about nutrition and it's probably the reason you've come to Massey to study nutrition. It enables you to get some nutrition right up front. There are also compulsory courses in chemistry, biochemistry, biology of cells, Communication, uh, as Matt said, it's really important to be able to communicate the message as well, message as well, and biometrics, and then other two other relevant courses for a total of eight uh, courses. In the second year, we get more into uh, nutrition again. So we've got a nutrition and metabolism paper, which takes you through all the key nutrients, our uh, different ways of um, assessing nutritional status, so through dietary measures, also anthropometric measures, so measuring body composition, um, clinical measures, so how do we measure iron status, how do we measure vitamin D status. We have a food chemistry paper which um, essentially teaches you how food uh, works and reacts and why certain foods uh, work well together and why others don't. Physiology, physiology is really important. It teaches you how the body works and how all our uh, different systems in the body work. We have two courses on physiology, biochemistry, and then three other courses. And then in the third year, we get quite specialized in terms of the different nutrition uh, courses that you can take. So we have one paper which focuses on maternal and child nutrition. So this really is specific to nutrition right through the, the life cycle up to a child adolescent. So uh, planning pregnancy, pregnancy, um, infants, toddlers, and then children through to adolescence. We have a sports nutrition paper, which many of our uh, Bachelor of Exercise and Sports Science uh, students take as well. So what we're looking at in this paper is um, how the different macronutrients contribute to different uh, sports performance. We consider different um, requirements of athletes. So what do endurance sport athletes need in terms of their nutrition? So people undertaking coast to coast or Ironman versus those athletes that might be involved in aesthetic sports such as ballet dancing or gymnastics through to team sports. Um, so what are the requirements for netball players, for rugby players and so on. And then some of the special uh, situations I guess that athletes face. So um, things like sports supplements, uh, ergogenic aids, uh, travelling, um, how do you manage nutrition when you're travelling as an athlete. Another paper we have is adult nutrition and positive ageing. So this is really um, nutrition uh, and well-being um, as an adult and how do people age well. So thinking about things like cognitive function, how can we improve how our brain functions, 
How can we prevent things like dementia happening too quickly? Um, how do we prevent diabetes, cardiovascular disease, uh, cancer, arthritis, that sort of thing? So what's the role of nutrition uh, in those areas? And then finally, we have a nutrition communication and promotion program, which or paper, which think, talks about how do we we might have all the scientific knowledge, but how do we get the messages across? So are we looking at things like infographics? How do we assess what's needed? How do we advise and make sure that um, change can happen? So things like counselling uh, individuals is covered. Uh, thinking about how to pre um, prepare talks so that they're interesting and engaging and uh, that there's buy-in uh, from the community. And then on top of that, there's another four uh, papers that uh, you have uh, voiced in terms of what you take. So some of our um, people that come and study nutrition at Massey University um, already have a degree and uh, wonder about studying nutrition. And yes, this is possible. So if you've done a degree in something entirely different, we do offer a graduate diploma in science, which is endorsed in human nutrition. This involves eight courses on campus and can be studied part time. And with additional courses, it can be used to apply for a place in our MSc uh, dietetic program. So at Massey University, we have got a whole heap of different uh, research facilities, which um, are really cutting edge. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll just take you through some of the photos just to show you and give you a little bit of a taste of some of the things that we do research wise. So um, we obviously have the basics like a stadiometer to measure height and um, scales to measure weight. What we've got here, this is a bod pod and it's like a little space capsule that um, essentially a person can hop into and rather than um, getting the body mass index which doesn't take into account muscle mass the bod pod will tell an individual what percentage fat mass and what percentage muscle mass is made up of um, their body is made up of so this contraction, it takes, uh, essentially, uh, people have to wear a swimsuit um, or tight-fitting clothes, a cap to reduce the ear displacement. And it's just a process which takes about 10 minutes to assess body composition. This one here is another way of measuring body composition, and that's actually me on uh, the DEXA machine. Um, what this does is it so it sends a little x-ray over the body, it measures your bone mineral density. So what is your risk of osteoporosis? But at the same time, you can get a measurement of your percentage body fat and muscle mass. We have a cognitive testing suite, which is here. So essentially this is um, a range of uh, computer-based cognitive tasks that you we can use to assess uh, cognitive ability. Um, we also uh, carry out a lot of surveys and questionnaires online. Um, we are able to take uh, blood samples for the testing of things like cholesterol levels, blood glucose levels, uh, vitamin D, iron status, inflammation, and so on. Um, we have labs facilities. So um, there's a couple of pictures there of uh, some of our lab facilities that we use. And a lot of our research is very practically orientated. So this is a picture of myself a few years ago um, where I ran a study with women who had mild iron deficiency. We recruited about 700 women to take part in this study. What we did was we gave them all a, a blood test and we um, recruited 100 women that were mildly iron deficient. Then what we did was we um, ran a trial where we had two groups. So both groups received an iron fortified breakfast cereal and one of the groups received kiwi fruit with that cereal. Kiwi fruit is very high in vitamin C and it enhances iron absorption. 
and the other group received a banana. So bananas have no vitamin C. And what we wanted to see was whether there was an effect on the iron stores of those women that had the kiwi fruit and the iron fortified breakfast cereal compared with those that had the banana. And what we found was that there was an effect after 16 weeks. So I was really excited to see that this had just been published in a, a textbook a few weeks ago. So that, that was really exciting for me. Um, providing, I worked out we provided breakfast cereals to 9,000 or 9,000 breakfast cereals over the course of uh, 16 weeks. So logistically, there's all sorts of um, challenges in terms of how do you get uh, bananas and kiwi fruit out to people um, so that they still taste good. Um, and meet the needs of the study. So there's a lot of um, challenges and I think with nutrition, um, it's, it's great because it, it's really applied. Um, people are interested in it, in it and you're constantly challenged and um, thinking about how the science can be translated into the real life um, setting. So um, in terms of uh, who to talk to, um, I've got a few more slides, but I will be available for questions afterwards. Uh, Associate Professor Pam von Hurst is our major leader for sport, exercise and nutrition. Um, so I guess we'll be able to distribute the contact details for Pam. And for the dietetics pathway, if you're interested in going the dietetics pathway route, Associate Professor Roseanne Kruger um, and her contact details are there. Now these are just a few um, photos of our graduates. So these were our dietetic graduates in 2012, 2013. They're all working in really different places at the moment. Um, we've got dietitians working in hospitals, um, Brisbane Hospital, Middlemore, uh, Waitakere, Northland, um, all over the country, Palmerston North. Uh, we've got uh, one of these graduates is working at the Diabetes Project Trust. Some of them have gone overseas um, and are working in England with their dietetics qualification as dietitians over there. A couple that work in private practice. Um, food service management is another area as well. Um, one of these graduates is working at, and also sanitarium. Um, these are a few pictures of our students at work. So uh, this one here is uh, at the Heart Foundation. Uh, this is Fiona Wendell, who works for New Zealand Beef and Lamb. We've got actually three of our graduates work for New Zealand Beef and Lamb. We have several working at the Heart Foundation. And uh, this one is Toi Tangata. Uh, so this is a Māori health provider in Auckland. Um, so we've had graduates work there as well. So I guess if we just uh, have a look at the, the photos, a few other things that we've got going on, the blood sampling, um, uh, blood pressure monitoring in the lab, uh, body composition measures, um, obviously food. Um, I think if you're studying nutrition and dietetics, um, it helps to, to like food. Um, a few other things to mention, I guess with the um, dietetics training program, there is a lot of opportunity uh, to get practical experience. So for example, our graduates or our, our students doing the dietetics program, they're required to spend 13 weeks uh, working within the hospital setting as diet, um, supervised by dietitians. And we organise these placement opportunities. They also spend four weeks in a public health setting and they spend four weeks in the food service uh, setting. Right, so I will be available um, in the Zoom room following this presentation. If you have any more um, questions or want to talk more about nutrition and dietetics. So that's it from me, thank you. Catherine, just before you go, we did have quite a few people um, in the Q&A ask um, a similar question. So I thought maybe if I just asked yeah. it to you, you could kind of um, speak on it. So um, 
a lot of people were wondering if there's any intention of this being available at the Manawatu campus. Um, I know we have it via distance, um, and linked to that question was if yeah, they are doing um, it via distance, is there any contact courses that they have to come to on campus? So sorry, kind of a double. Yeah, double sorry, I just I just want to make sure I get that. I've got. Um, yeah, so um, nutrition is um, is essentially the off offering that I've talked about through the College of Health is that that will be at the Albany campus, and dietetics can only be done at the Albany campus. Um, so that was one question, and then was the other question about distance learning? Yes, and if there was any contact courses. So if they'd have to come um, on campus at all. Yeah, so um, essentially at the moment, the BSC is um, all, um, it, it is contact, it, it's on, it is on campus. Um, we're looking at ways to deliver it online, but at the moment it is um, on campus. And dietetics is um, definitely on campus. Yeah. Good. Welcome everybody. Tēnā koutou katoa, no mai haere mai. Ko Jenny Takawengua. Uh, I'm Jenny and thank you for coming along to our info session on the Bachelor of Nursing at Massey. Uh, tonight we've got Marla Burrow who's here from Palmerston North and Shelley Vanderkrop who's from Wellington and we've also got Kylie Van Vliet who's one of our Year 3 nursing students uh, and they will be able to answer your questions during the session and after the presentation. So I work at the Auckland campus so we've got lecturers from each of the three campuses. You'll see on the screen a QR code with, and it'll be on some of our other slides as well. If you hold your phone over it and with, a, with your camera activated, it will take you directly to our website so that you can find the application forms for the courses that we're going to talk about tonight. But we'll also answer your questions, so pop, pop them in the Q&A and we'll take them as we head through the presentation. So now when you study at nursing at Massey, you'll be part of a program that's renowned for its first class nursing curriculum and for educating nursing students to contribute to a wide range of healthcare workplaces. Our degree is so highly respected and recognised that both New Zealand and overseas employers hire most of our graduates within six to eight months of finishing the three year programme. Most people who want to become a nurse have the characteristics that are shown here on the screen. They're problem solvers, an inquirer, they want to make a difference. So if this is you, then nursing could be a great career for you. Nurses have a real interest in the health and well-being of population groups and communities. There are a variety of opportunities open to you and with nurses taking on advanced and extended roles to meet the needs of diverse population groups. There's a clear need for assessment of patients in rural and remote settings and nurse practitioners are able to provide an equivalent level of service in these settings and indeed patients identify that, that their experience is of excellent healthcare assessment from a nurse practitioner. We're privileged to work with so many different people in different cultures and settings and by work I mean working with clients or patients as well as working with our colleagues. And wherever there are people there are health needs and nurses are needed there. So shown here are some of the places that you'd find nurses, but they also work with non-governmental organisations in New Zealand like the Arthritis Foundation, the Parkinson's Society, Asthma and Respiratory Foundation, Huntington's Disease Association of New Zealand, the Cancer Society and just that's just to name a few. Nurses are employed in all of these settings. Massey University offers high quality programs right from the Bachelor of Nursing through to PhD in Nursing. Our graduates are sought after and in fact many nursing graduates from Massey have held positions of leadership around the world and in New Zealand. A previous chair of the International Federation of Nurses was Frances Hughes who's a Massey graduate and our previous head of school was the chair of the New Zealand Nursing Council. We consider ourselves to be a national school of nursing because we have both undergraduate and postgraduates across New Zealand and we have a program that covers the entire country. Within the community, you'll find us in district nursing, Plunkett, Oranga Tamariki, 
public health and primary health care organisations. And in the centre of the screen here is a nurse practitioner. Nurse practitioners often practice in primary health care settings. They're expert nurses who work within a specific area of practice, incorporating advanced knowledge and skills. They practice both independently and in collaboration with other healthcare professionals to promote health and wellness, to prevent disease, and to assess, diagnose, and administer therapies to manage health, people's health needs. The Massey School of Nursing coordinates the Nurse Practitioner Training Program, which is responsible for the preparation of these expert nurses to make a major contribution to the health and wellness of New Zealanders. You will have seen the important role that nurses are taking along with their healthcare colleagues in the current COVID-19 pandemic responses across the world. This is the 200th year anniversary of the birth of Florence Nightingale, and 2020 is the International Year of the Nurse and the Midwife. Nurses globally number over 20 million, and with 56,000 here in New Zealand making a difference every day in the lives of New Zealanders. Nurses focus on caring, give life-saving immunisations and health advice, and meet essential health needs. As the nursing workforce is ageing, it is predicted that over 50% of our current nursing workforce in New Zealand will retire by 2035. The, the world needs 9 million more nurses and midwives to achieve universal health coverage by 2030. So Bachelor of Nursing graduates will be a much needed uh, group of people in the years to come. Most people want to know what am I going to earn at the end of this degree? The current new grad salary is around 54,000, but incomes are variable. <clears throat> it depends on where you work, who your employer is, how long you've been working, your years of experience, and where in the country you work, with some nurses earning salaries of up to 130,000. The Ministry of Health offer a voluntary bonding scheme to encourage newly qualified health, health professionals to work in communities and specialties that need them the most and to retain essential health professionals in New Zealand. So these schemes, the people that are on them, receive an annual payment to help prepay or repay some of their student loans or as a top-up income. For 2020, the identified areas of needs the Ministry of Health have highlighted are aged residential care and older adult health services, mental health, both in the hospital and community, including addiction services, district nursing, oranga tamariki, well child, primary health care, and practice nursing within Māori and Pacifica providers, but also primary health care and practice nursing within specific DHBs, such as Auckland, Counties Manukau, Waitemata, Taranaki, Wairua District, West Coast and South Canterbury DHBs. Once our nursing students finish their Bachelor of Nursing, they sit the Nursing Council of New Zealand State Exam. Since Massey has only one intake per year, our third year students sit their state exams in November of each year. And there are two exams and they're both multiple choice. A successful pass <clears throat> means that they are registered nurses in New Zealand. Our school had 100% pass rate for state exam finals last year. And national st statistics show that in 2018, there were just over or just under 1,300 nurses who passed their state finals, and of those, 85% were employed immediately, 5% were still seeking work, and 10% weren't seeking employment or they hadn't answered the survey. The Bachelor of Nursing is a selected entry degree. Shown here are some of the details that are required for if you're planning on enrolling. You need 14 credits in biology, chemistry, or physics at level three. You'll also need to submit a 300 word personal statement, your CV and two referee reports. You'll find some of the other details shown here by going to the QR link that will be on one of the slides later and it will take you directly to the application site on the Massey website. It's great to consider voluntary work, working as a healthcare assistant or a lifeguard or St John's volunteer. Because voluntary work or working as a healthcare assistant is really useful. It identifies to us that you are passionate about and committed about being involved with people. And it also gives you a chance to work with people and see if nursing is really an aspect that you'd like to take on as a career.
Sean, here are some of the lecturers who will be supporting you to become one of the best registered nurses in the country. We have about 24 teaching staff and we also have many guest lecturers who come in to teach in their specialty area from right through from the undergraduate to the postgraduate courses. In our last performance based research funding round, which is what all the university courses are measured by in 2018, Massey was ranked as the leading research institution in nursing in New Zealand across all of the universities. Our research focuses on investigating the effectiveness of models of care and primary health care delivery, research into the impact of health and wellness for people living with long term conditions. We have research on the nursing workforce, which is actually the largest healthcare professional workforce in New Zealand. And these are just a few of the many topics that we are currently researching. We have a long track record of research and, and producing undergraduate, postgraduate students who are focusing on research. Many of the staff shown here are experts in their fields. Massey campuses are shown here too. We have approximately 500 Bachelor of Nursing students across the three campuses. If you're considering leaving home to study, Massey is the only national university with a Bachelor of Nursing program on Auckland, Wellington and the Palmerston North Campus. The library service um, is fantastic. It's a world class facility. Staff are eager to help you in any possible way. Uh, there are academic writing support from our Centre for Teaching and Learning and we have IT support too to sort out any of your issues with computers and devices. There is a variety of student accommodation options across the three campuses and they include both catered and self catered packages. Our degree is designed to include a range of learning environments and learning styles. Practice shown here in our simulation labs is a key feature in preparing students for clinical placements. The clinical placements come early in year one and they continue throughout the degree. We employ registered nurses to work as clinical teaching associates to support students during these clinical placements. We exceed the number of clinical hours that are required by the Nursing Council. And interestingly, Australia has limited their numbers of undergraduate clinical hours to 800. So at 1100, we're well over this. Here is a range of the subjects that are covered in the Bachelor of Nursing. Our aim is to prepare graduates who will be knowledgeable and skillful professional nurses to be able to practice in a range of settings. Massey University nursing students are equipped with contemporary knowledge, skills and attitudes which enable them to promote well-being, assess wide ranging care needs and undertake skilled nursing practice that achieves the health goals of individuals, whānau, family and communities. Older people can be more vulnerable to loneliness and social isolation and are at greater risk of health and social issues, which can be directly linked to loneliness. Our students are caring for older adults, living in aged care facilities and are learning about attending to their physical, social, whānau, spiritual and psychological well-being during their first year. Students in these placements can have a huge impact on the lives of the older adults and we never want to underestimate what they can do in the lives of the people that they're caring for. During year two predominantly, you'd be working in the DHB hospital environments, in the community and in primary health care. So for example, community alcohol and drug service or Plunkett or accident emergency clinics or primary health care organisations. And nurses in these places will be your preceptors and mentors and this continues throughout the whole degree programme. And in year three, there are two distinct semesters and Kylie will talk a bit about that soon. One of, the, one of these is focused on people requiring acute nursing care in hospitals and in inpatient mental health. And the second part is the pre-grad or transition semester of nine weeks in an area that you'd like to work in eventually. And at the end of this, you search your Nursing Council of New Zealand state final examination. A great thing we've got happening right now is that enrolments are also open for the Master of Clinical Practice, which is a postgraduate pathway to becoming a registered nurse. So if you've already got a degree in something, then this two year full time course, which is available via distance, could be exactly what you're looking for. This degree begins in semester two of this year and the QR code shown here will take you directly to the enrolment for that program. 
Once you finish the degree, there are many postgraduate opportunities and career options for you. Um, uh, in the graduate year from the bachelor's, there is a nurse entry to practice program, which is a one year program that many district health boards and healthcare organisations offer. And also this postgraduate study in nursing. Careers within nursing can take you through to things like safety and risk management, clinical specialties, research, education, becoming advisory in the Ministry of Health or in management and leadership roles. When you are a registered nurse, you have the option to work anywhere in the world. And Andrew here has chosen to work in war-torn countries. He was currently working on eradicating polio in, in southern Afghanistan. And a typical day for him might see him travel to an international military base to assess the health of prisoners of war or train Afghani taxi drivers in first aid, which is vital in a region where ambulances are scarce. Or he might check on prisons for signs of health in detention abuses. He says, we make sure that detainees are properly cared for according to the Geneva Conventions, that prisoners are cared for properly. Amongst his awards, he's a Massey University Distinguished Alumnus. In 2004, he was named Australian Nurse of the Year, but he's also one of the few New Zealanders who's been awarded the Red Cross's Florence Nightingale Medal, which is given for courage and devotion to the sick and disabled or to civilian victims of conflict. We're going to pause now and I'll hand over to Shelley, who is a lecturer in our Wellington campus, and she's going to be talking with Kylie, who is currently a third year student in our Bachelor of Nursing program. Uh, kia ora everybody and thank you for coming and a special thank you to Kylie for coming along, um, who's our uh, third year nursing student. So um, Kylie, uh, there are a lot of um, Bachelor of Nursing programs out there. Um, would you be able to share with us um, why you chose um, Matthew University? Yeah, of course. Hi, everyone. So one of the aspects that really stood out to me about Matthew University was the small intake that they have. So this means that having a smaller cohort means the class sizes are small as well. So I find now I can go up to my lecturer before class, or after class with any worries, concerns, anything I have, and they're able to just answer me straight away. So it's really good. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Um, and now that you're in your third and final year of, of the Bachelor of Nursing program, can you tell everyone a little bit about the um, clinical placements that you will be um, you will be doing? Yeah, so I'm currently in my third year, like you said, in the first semester. So I had the opportunity to do three weeks inpatient mental health, three weeks medical, which is at your hospital, and three weeks surgical, where you get the opportunity to possibly go into theatre, watch an operation, all the cool stuff. Then I gave up for my pre-graduate transition for nine weeks next semester. I gave up three areas that I would like to go in and Massey University tries and accommodates that and will hopefully place me in one of those areas. So it's, it's really cool I get to do one the final nine weeks placement in an area that I personally really enjoy. Fantastic. Um, and what would you say so far has been the highlight of your, um, your nursing under undergraduate nursing um, degree? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, the highlight for me would just be seeing your patients' faces after you've done something for them. You know, they are so grateful that we are studying to become a nurse. And even just the simple things like bringing them a tea or a coffee at the hospital, you know that you've just brightened their day and they're so grateful for that. So that would be the highlight of it. Fantastic. And uh, what do you think, um, for someone who was thinking of become, going into the Bachelor of Nursing program, what do you think, um, what, would, what would your advice be to them if they were thinking about it? I would say go for it. Definitely with NASI, you more or less, you know, you have your placements quite fast, which is only a positive thing because you get to know what nursing is truly like and you can know if it's for you and if it's not for you. But nursing is such a rewarding profession. Even as a student, I 
find extremely rewarding being out on placement and really making a difference. So if, even if you're thinking about nursing, look into it and definitely give it a go. It is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Um, so just a reminder on the screen is showing the QR code. If you want to hold your phone over it with your camera, it will take you directly to the uh, Massey website. And um, Marla, can I just ask you just to respond to um, about the this new course that we've got, the Master of Clinical Practice? Yeah, um, so we have a Master of Clinical Practice that's designed for those who already have a degree. Um, it's an accelerated program, so you will be getting a, a BN, well, the equivalent, so it's, it's, it's a master's level. So while you will be getting um, a, you'll be able to sit the state boards and become a registered nurse, you will also be taking courses at a graduate level. Um, so it's a bit of a hybrid. So that's, that's kind of what that is in a nutshell. It is, it, it takes two years. Um, and so it is quite quite a, a um, intense an intense process. And do people need to have a uh, undergraduate degree that's related to health? No, no. We can have uh, you can have a degree. Really, you've you've done the hard yards. Some people are coming in with masters already in different degrees. Some people are coming in with just a bachelor's in a different area. But you've got the degree, and so we we now have that um, that sort of accelerated alternate entry into that master's program. So you can get that. You can become a nurse, and work. Cool. Right. Thanks very much. So Kylie, can I just come back to you for a moment? Um, what what do you think if there was something that you would like to say to people that are here wondering about whether nursing is for them? Uh, what, what's your kind of last thoughts you'd want to say to them about the choice that you've made and uh, where you believe things are going to be heading for you? Yeah, so when I was thinking about doing nursing, I was even a bit hesitant myself, you know, like nurses you know, they're quite up there. They are the most trusted, one of the most trusted professions and, you know, they're nurses, they're amazing. But you get taught so much throughout the three years. And yeah, if you even, you know, enjoy giving back, you want to help people, this is the perfect career for that because that is exactly what you'll be doing. You'll be making a difference. You'll be helping people. So yeah, go for it. <laughs> Right, and it's actually um, fabulous to, we have that privilege of being with people um, when they're born and when they pass away. Mm -hmm. and, and we cover that whole continuum and it's such a privilege to be part of people's lives in those moments that are so significant for them. So it's a real privilege, so yeah. Shelley, do you have any um, last, any thoughts that you wanted just as kind of as we're finishing, we've, we've been answering some questions. Uh, people have been putting questions into the Q&A, so that's fabulous. Keep putting them there and we'll be responding to them as we can. Um, yeah, so in terms of your career and what you've done and where you've gone, any thoughts you want to say about that? Uh, yeah, so I've been a nurse for about 20 years, although I may not look it. Um, so <laughs> Um, I, I've worked in a lot of different areas. Um, I've worked in the good old hospital um, doing uh, a whole range of things from paediatrics to oncology to emergency nursing and I've also worked out in the um, primary care sector as a uh, practice nurse and a plunket nurse and at ACC and in the PHOs. Um, and all I want to tell people out there is that um, that's just a snippet of the uh, yeah. places that you can work. Um, you, you, As a nurse, you can just almost go everywhere and anywhere. And the exciting thing is, as Jenny said, is that you are involved in people's lives from the very beginning to right at the end. And that's what um, that's what brings me joy, um, is being able to be there when people are vulnerable and in need and to be able to help them out. Um, and also uh, the joy I get as a teacher is to relive some of those first moments when people learn, students learn how to do something and then they um, they share that joy with you. And and that just keeps me, um, keeps me going and um, uh, really enthusiastic. So if you're thinking about nursing, absolutely, um, you know, um, talk to us and apply. It's a really rewarding job. Fabulous. And Marla? Um. I, I 
from the United States. So I have a uh, master's in nursing from the US and I came to New Zealand in 2012 and have my, I, I've been an academic here, but I have been working very closely in um, aged care and with my students out in, in the hospital area and in, in interprofessional education as well. So um, it's been, I've, I mean, I, yeah, you can go anywhere with your, your nursing degree and you can do so many different things, just like what Shelly was talking about. So um, it's been a great journey. Highly recommend it. Did I answer the question correctly? <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, great, thank you. That super. Was brilliant, brilliant. Um, and now I'm hoping, I'm getting some messages saying that I've got poor quality network here. So I'm hoping that you can see our last slide, which says, fulfill your dreams and be a lifesaver. Can I get a thumbs up from someone if that's showing on your screen? Maybe it's not. <laughs> well, we do thank you for coming along tonight to hear um, about the nursing program and uh, the details here are shown, the contact details here for the nursing degree. Um, thanks for coming along and we hope to see you in our program. And thanks to, to Kylie, Shelley and Marla for joining me tonight. Kakita Anno, bye for now. Well, hi everyone. My name is Wei Hung Chua. I'm a lecturer in the School of Health Sciences uh, on the Manawatu campus in Palmerston North. I'd like to talk to you about the subject I lecture here at Massey, uh, which is physiology. So, if you've got a curiosity about the way the body, either human or animal, works. Um, then physiology might just be the subject for you. So you might be wondering what is physiology? And that was actually a question that I had myself when I first started university. But once I found out, it was um, quite straightforward. That was what I wanted to study. Um, but physiology is the study of the mechanisms and processes that underpin life in living organisms. So. It revolves around how do molecules, cells, tissues and organs, all these things that make up the body of an organism, how do they function together? How does this allow that organism to interact and respond to its environment? And how does the structure of all these components of the body relate to the function of the body? And this helps us to understand how life operates at all of these levels, all the way from the molecules, the cells, the tissues, the organs, the organ systems, all the way up to the whole body. So I think that physiology is one of the most exciting fields in biological science. And in fact, it's one of the, the, the few named sciences um, in the Nobel Prize categories um, where they award a Nobel Prize in physiology or medicine for groundbreaking discoveries and contributions contributions in this field. So I've talked a little bit about the small and big concepts around physiology. So how does it actually relate to the real world at Massey? So I'll briefly sort of, I'll go over two examples that were involved um, with here at Massey. So our introduction to the world obviously starts when we're born. Sometimes one's arrival uh, and the world is sort of straightforward um, and other times it's more complicated and requires medical intervention um, and the use of drugs to manage um, the process. So this is where this particular study or this picture that you can see um, in the center um, revolves around. So um, on the left hand side um, you can see a small part of the uterus and using our understanding um, of the physiology we're analyzing, and these are these four bars on the right hand side, we're analyzing how the different muscles in the uterine wall are contracting after a drug has been administered. So understanding this process um, helps us to inform ourselves as biologists about the, the process, but it also helps doctors and hospitals understand um, how a drug they might be using might actually uh, be having an effect in the tissue. So in another example, you've probably um, heard the, the public health messages that good nutrition and exercise help to build um, and maintain a healthy skeleton. 
So um, a group of researchers put forward a theory about how osteocytes, the main uh, bone cell um, in the skeleton, how they could be controlling the other types of bone cells in the body. So they grew osteocytes in the laboratory and exposed them to nutrients and simulated exercise. And then they monitored those cells um, to see if there were any change in their function. So why study physiology? It gives us a, I guess, the basic information about life and how um, normal body function occurs in an organism. It gives us an insight into the processes that help keep us healthy and what happens in the body and the processes as we age. And it also helps to give us an understanding about um, the processes that are happening um, when there are abnormal functions during disease. And all of this information helps in our, um, I guess, goal to um, treat disease um, in animals and in humans. Um, this information also helps us to understand how organisms can survive in different types of extreme environments. So you can see that there's this fairly wide range of different sort of scientific um, uh, aspects of physiology which um, require training in um, critical thinking, planning and analysis, um, good communication skills and also um, some sort of I mean, background or training in contemporary, contemporary laboratory skills in the biological sciences is necessary to better um, investigate all of these things. And this is hopefully something that comes through in, the, um, as in, in your um, journey as a student. So why study physiology at Massey University? So Massey University is engaged in physiology research in a wide range of areas relevant to the biological sciences. Um, and also the biomedical sciences and animal biology. So I've just listed um, a smattering of ex examples of areas that um, researchers here at Massey are um, undertaking physiological research. So this breadth of researchers means that there's a good team of teachers with the relevant background um, in the field to guide you in the subject. So I guess importantly, what sort of career opportunities do you have with the Bachelor of Science in Physiology? So physiology is um, essential as a subject for those training for employment in animal, human, or the health sciences. And most physiology graduates end up working in sectors here in New Zealand or overseas. Um, and so those heading off um, in the direction of research usually end up in universities or one of the Crown um, Research Institutes, places like um, ag research or um, the uh, plant and food um, re um, research um, and they may end up in other food related um, research centers such as um, with companies such as Fonterra or in drug or biotech companies. So some people will be interested or some of you might be interested in teaching and so physiology is the basic sort of science um, helps to underpin I guess biology doesn't it. So um, teaching in terms of graduates, um, they many end up in schools um, or politics or universities, both here in New Zealand or abroad. Now, some of you may be aiming towards a, um, a, a career in um, healthcare. So um, some graduates have um, specialized to become medical physiologists who exist in hospitals um, and uh, I guess, take their physiology to the next level in terms of um, sick patients. So those, um, that is certainly one direction that some physiology graduates um, move into. Um, and they also have moved into other allied fields um, with um, subsequent training after um, their basic Bachelor of Science. And then um, other graduates have headed into government, the, I mean the government sector and also the private sector. And so definitely there's medical, um, the, the, the medical field, the veterinary fields, um, and also things such as journalism or nutrition and dietetics um, are all areas that physiologists um, or physiology graduates have gone in. So what's actually involved with doing a Bachelor of Science in Physiology? So you either um, can undertake the subject as a major 
um, or A minor. Um, but usually a Bachelor of Science involves um, a full time um, three years of study. And when you undertake physiology as a major, you can um, select um, one of those other subjects that you're interested in um, as a minor that to do. So you could do a minor in human nutrition um, or exercise science, um, molecular biology um, or biochemistry, psychology or ecology or zoology. Or you might be taking a, um, a major in one of those subjects um, and um, this way you can dovetail um, physiology um, as a minor with one of those um, to help round out your um, Bachelor of Science. So it's one of these subjects that nicely dovetails with a lot of other um, biological sciences in the Bachelor of Science. So what entry requirements are required? So you need to um, have NCEA Level 3 in Biology and Chemistry, and ideally um, some background in Physics or Mathematics. Um, those are desirable, but they're not essential. Uh, but in the first year or in the summer school, you're able to do different types of introductory courses, which might help scrub you up in um, either biology, chemistry, um, or one of those other two, physics and mathematics. So um, in general, the first year of the Bachelor of Science is designed to sort of ensure that um, all of you, um, all Bachelor of Science students have a sort of thorough science grounding. Um, and then later in um, the year, we also um, take you through an introduction into the key concepts in um, either human or animal physiology. Okay, what courses should you be studying in first year? So um, there's a little bit of difference here between Albany and Palmerston North, um, depending on which campus you're um, aiming to come to. So on the Albany campus, it's important that you do um, a course called 214101, which is called Human Bioscience, which is in semester one. Um, and then you can see a whole range of different types of sort of science courses that you need to be taking. There is room for one elective um, in first year. Uh, and now when we come to the Manawatu campus, um, the key course that you need to take is called 194101, which is called Introductory Physiology. And so this is in semester two. And then you've got those same um, core science courses that you need to do. Um, now, there again is space there for an elective in first year. Now, when you come to second year, um, things get a little bit more specialized here and we go into more um, detail, but we start to look at um, organ systems and um, a little bit more in depth. So we look at the nervous system, including the brain, the endocrine system, so things like hormones. Uh, we look at the heart, lungs, digestive system, musculoskeletal system, the reproductive system, kidneys, the urinary system, and the immune system. So that's sort of like tackled in second year. And we may even look at some of those in even more detail in third year. Now in third year, you can choose from more um, advanced um, topics. Um, such as cell physiology, metabolic physiology, and environmental physiology. And for those of you that are particularly interested in animals, there may be an opportunity to do um, animal welfare um, as um, a subject that you, um, uh, you, can, you can delve into. And there are um, other subjects that I've, or other courses that I've listed there. So one thing I didn't mention is um, in year two and year three, uh, there is a lot more opportunity to do electives. And so this is where those other majors um, or those other or minors that you're doing, those other minoring subjects, um, you can fill in the gaps um, by um, tackling other subjects that you're really keen and interested in. So um, thanks very much for um, dialing in and having a listen to what I've got to say about this subject. I hope um, you um, stir some interest. Uh, now, if you've got any questions about um, the structure or um, possible um, you know, job destinations and that sort of thing, uh, and what study at Massey is like um, on either campus, um, if you're interested in the Albany campus, um, please contact Dr. Martin Dickens, his email details are there. And if you're interested in uh, study at Palms North, um, don't hesitate to contact me um, and we can have a conversation.